Good intro, that still. Still a good intro. Hello, everybody. It's Monday. It's eight o'clock. It's the Plastic Crack Podcast. And we are up to episode 42 of series three. Gee whiz. Ser- it feels like we skipped a few more this year because that means we're, yeah. We're, we're, yeah, we're, we're six down. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 we are six down. Yeah, yeah we've yeah, <laughs> been miscounted somewhere. Yeah, I think, no, I think, I think that's probably, next, that's probably about right. To be fair, I think next year we'll have to have some serious housekeeping with this series, uh, this this episode marker because uh, I don't know, it's one of those things. Anyway, hello. <laughs> it's the start of the week. How are we, chaps? How are we all? We're good. Yeah, well, I am now. Yeah, yeah, very good actually. It's a good weekend. Very exciting and very busy. And it's Monday, so how you know Monday night? You've got to love a Monday, Monday night, night you? rock and roll. Yeah. Can, can you feel in a sense of um, fulfillment now your attic's done? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I half Just, expected when you when you put that video up, I thought it might be again the ladder had gone and you were basically gone to Facebook. <laughs> but I someone in your There's a cry for help. Martin's Ken. done it again. Oh, and quick question then. Please. From the start to the beginning of that project, how many times did you swear? A lot. Uh, <laughs> I'd say probably over five hundred at least. I could, I could uh, how many? Up. If you ask me, how many bruises? Thousands. Got, <laughs> thousands <laughs> of them. I've even oh. done this to my bloody finger. I smacked it with a hand. You probably can't see it very well, but I had a blood blister there. I, I thought it'd be funny to pop it. Yeah, that one. That one a good idea. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So 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 yeah, decided to piss with blood, which was great. Um, Pumping claret, yeah, yeah. I, I hit it with a hammer, so it was. Uh, well, if you're gonna do it, do it properly, eh? Yeah, I did. I've never done one like that before, and it, uh, it, it, it. Let's just say there was a few extra choice words said afterwards, and my mother-in-law was literally at the bottom of the ladder. So, it wasn't uh, like an episode of Tom and Jerry where Tom hits his thumb and goes, "Yeah," oh, that was it. No. <laughs> No, the, the word the word beginning with C might have been used a few times. So, uh, yes. I did think that that picture inside your um your fiddle yard looked more like a cannabis factory. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. she yes. said it. Do you know what? My mother-in-law said exactly the same thing. She goes, "Where's <laughs> all the weed, got, when, Ken?" And she's yeah, not but even when he's like got that going. When he's got that going, he's got the trains going, and he's up there because you've got a heater up there, haven't you? You got a heater yeah, up there. Yeah. You're gonna have lighting up there. So when anyone does a thermal camera, and they're oh, the police are gonna have a criminal field. Yeah, they're, gonna, gonna they're gonna be chasing <laughs> someone in that field behind your house. They're gonna be chasing someone, and they're gonna make a mental note. Yeah, go to that house. Go back around let's there. Go have, Ken, go the, fi- the, the five O's we ran your door with a big red key. Yeah, they will. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just, he's gonna say, no, no, it's just my soldiers and my train. Honestly, be, oh yes, like, come <laughs> yeah, and then they go up there and actually see it's just trains and soldiers, and they'll be like, and they'll arrest what you. A sad, sad. <laughs> what a sad <laughs> prick! <laughs> what a sad, sad prick! Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. big, massive, massive thank you as always to anybody that's watching this on the catch up. Uh, don't forget to like the stream. I hate doing all this this YouTube stuff. Like the stream, mm. and share, subscribe, all the all the stuff, all the um, uh, the, the ball bag the, stuff, the the, the YouTube. He's stuff. trying to it's be just... the cool one and be like, oh, like really, really, like, oh. Do you no, not notice the camera about it? You really don't notice the camera at an angle. He's trying to be the chill, cool one. Ca- it's a, it's yeah. an angle because my because yeah. my tripod's not. <laughs> not no, working. mine. Look at my camera. Oh, my yours. Camera's all right. Yeah, look, look. I'm at an angle. You not see? I'm I'm down with the kids, isn't it? Oh, is that no. what it is? Are you, are you Wait, dropping it's a, props? It's actually, it's actually sat on a Dewalt drill at the moment. Dropping what? I'm, dropping what? Dropping props. I'm I street. I thought you no, said no. crotch. Martin, I've lost track of what the hell's going on in this show. What I don't know. No, no we're dro- idea. We're, we're, you know uh, we're, 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 we're in a cannabis farm and we're dropping crotch. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but on a ser- serious <laughs> note, right? Laura's, Laura's been watching I'm a Celebrity like many other partners have, right? Okay. And certain people might be watching it as well. But there was a saying that you, you someone used, one that Owen used, and I was like, "What does that actually mean?" And it was at that moment I knew that I was getting old. Oh. I, <laughs> when he said, "Yeah, that's gash, gash or something like that," and it meant really cool, and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" Literally, no, <laughs> no idea what any of that means. Yeah, and I was like, "Wow, I am old." And it made me feel very depressed. If it makes you feel better, I did an induction today for someone that was born in 2001. That made Oh, me don't! I work with someone that was born in 2003. They weren't even alive for 9-11. It freaks me out. 
Oh. I, love it. I, have, I like how for all all the things that could have happened, you picked that. I said the Y two K thing. You had to go, you had to go full why. ball. I did, yeah, but I don't even remember Y two K very well. I re- I remember nine eleven. <laughs> I think we should right, um, move, <laughs> moving on from this um, this rather morose <laughs> therapy session. Um, to, <laughs> tonight's theme is sort of split into two 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 things. Um, it's sort of a hobby clinic, but we're going to be discussing for the most part basing because you know we all love a bit of basing, don't we? We Hopefully. do. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I've never played that. <laughs> never will. It looks like a load of arse. Um, <laughs> but the, the, <laughs> Rage Shadow Legends. <laughs> We're going to briefly Hello touch on something that, that sort of sprung up in the Facebook group the other week from a post that I put, and that's those parts of the hobby, sort of painting and modelling, that really, really get up your pipe, that really annoy you, that really grind yeah. your gears. We're um, going to get loads actually, of chat. We're all the stuff from the chat. That'll be awesome. So I've taken some <laughs> screenshots so I didn't have to, you know, write everything down. Um, but before we do that, before we get we get on, let's see who's joined us for tonight's proceedings and festivities. Um Jonas, 29 hours later and no one in the chat. Evening arms. <laughs> de- dedication, Jonas. Um, Rogers Company, hello. Uh, Don, Bicker City, Ham and Jam. Benjamin Christiansen's here. John Sowby. Who else we got? Uh, Studio Guru, Mark. Lisa Pirate Painting, David Baker. Uh, Nigel Jones, Barnes White. Uh, East Norfolk. Marcus Bowen. It's Marcus. We've not seen him before, Marcus. You new? Mm-hmm. Welcome to the stream, my friend. Welcome. Uh, we've got Red Steph. We've got Steve Harbour. Hello, Steve. Uh, Carl Burks. Alex from Storm of Steel is here. Do, 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 do. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Duke Wellington. He is. Um... Good day from the land of Oz. Hope we're all bonzer. I certainly don't feel bonds with this weather. I heard someone, but because because sorry, I was going to drop this in. I heard the um one of the girls I inducted today was a is Australian. She called someone a drongo. I didn't realize that was like, <laughs> oh that's great. Was, great actually, great, having you have it used in conversation was amazing. That is brilliant. That's fair, oh, Dinkin. Okay. Uh-huh. And the way she probably said it as well. Are you drongo? Oh yeah, we we can't get away. We're saying it in the the, the correct proper way. No, uh, Corey's me. here, old school FRP, friend of General Hague. Hello, Andy. Uh, Dan Justin, hello, Dan. Uh, Graham's War Game Vault, Mobile and Hostel, Nick Games. Uh, Rich John, Scale Model Inc. Hello, Corey. Uh, Alan Dean, Pat Neal, Miller's Miniatures. Miller is here. Hello. Um, um, Charles Latour is here. And we have GC Murray, uh, Gary Clark. See, I'm using a mouse tonight and it's working properly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Robin's here. Robin, are you back from holiday? Is he back from holiday? Is he watching this in yeah, unholiday yeah, mode? No, yeah, he's he's back. He's back. Ah, good stuff. Uh, Bite Size Wargaming. Hello. Uh, Shakers and Spurs. Hello, James. Uh, Ozmozzy. Uh, li- uh, Facebook user. Not sure who you are. Uh, Rob and Rose Hobden. Um, who else we got? Do, 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 do. Scroll down. Leslie's here. Her evening. Evening state. Hello, Leslie. Did you see the last video, Leslie? Clean, clean dancing hands again. <laughs> uh, David through um, Nathan's here. Uh, oh, um, it is. We, I was right. Marcus has finally caught a live show. There we go. Hey. Well, done. There you go well done, and thank you for taking the time. Because I'm not sure where you are, but it, it's probably a mad time at some places in the world. Um, and we've got Andy Rue and Crossing Obstacles Gaming. I think we're done for all the housekeeping. Welcome everybody. Um, right, so. On to what we've been up to. Uh, let's start with let's start with the Project King himself. Oh, Dom, take it away. We're all braced for impact, mate. <sighs> oh god! Five man. years later. Five days later. <laughs> well, some of it you've already seen. So uh, if you watched the video and it looked at the Facebook page, but Dude. I finished off these Normans. <clears throat> They're uh, so nice. They yeah. were lovely. They look really Very nice. Dom. I saw the video yesterday, Dom. You know, you know me. I'm not a fan of metal miniatures. But they look top notch. They look the part. They are brilliant. I have to say, they are really nice models. You know, I was somebody else was commenting on the in the chat um, in the comment section of the video I put up with about just something about some some um, models just are crying out for the paint, and they just work just perfectly. Yeah. And these mm-hmm. were definitely these, and the infantry the same. The infantry exactly the same. 
I wasn't going to get any more, but I think I might have to get a few more. It's all those all the outlaws and that. That's, Do- that's Dom's favourite saying, isn't it? Maybe we should yeah. do a yeah. crack on top of that. I wasn't going to get any more, but then I got <laughs> some I'm, more. What the hell? It's only money, right? It's only money. <laughs> Um, what else have I got here? I, I finished. I also um, continued with my saga. So Ooh, another nice. point of saga: uh, pikemen, phalangites. Very nice. They're getting very, very gaudy. <laughs> I'm gone a bit mad with the colours, but I've got. Are, are, the... are they are they plastic or metal? What do you think, Steve? What the big spiky things? Are they are they metal as well? They are proper. Mi- they're proper hand spike metal. They are. They this, look at, uh, if they don't get you about five times in an evening, <laughs> they're doing something wrong. Uh, they are seriously, seriously nasty. Um, and I did a general because. Oh, very nice. Very very yeah. nice. I'm not sure I'm yeah, going to use cool. him as my general. I might use another one, but uh, I kind of liked him. He is plastic. He's one of the Vitrix. Um, figures. Oh, his face looks really dark on that picture. I have to look at that again. He's not blacked up, honestly. He's just, uh, just for some reason, it's very, very dark. It's very dark. Um, and then also, I did this. Yeah, it's talking about faces. Her faces looks a bit weird as well. This was Andy at uh, CrackCon gave me this um, to go with my uh, 55 days stuff. So, thank you, Andy. I painted her up. There you go. That's all. That's it. That's it. Jesus. I had it was Elaine's birthday this weekend, so uh, ah, not right. in my defence, I haven't. Was you were you were at Abba or something? Were you? Did uh, yeah, she dragged me to the Abba thing, which I dragged you, most... dragged you. <laughs> I was never you... much of an Abba fan, to be honest. It, but no. you know what? It's absolutely. Fun. I don't know if anyone else has seen it, but it's like this. Their um, avatars. It's just yeah. It's most my mother she, thing. Do you know what's really weird? My mother-in-law went and watched it this weekend as well. How weird! Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, it's probably she was probably one of the embarrassing ones jumping around in the front like most people were. <laughs> God, yeah, it some of them me. all got dressed up in the whole seventies get up and everything. It was quite impressive, <laughs> but it was an absolutely extraordinary thing. Um, yeah. You know, very, very good, very, very impressive show. Dom, so I take it you you weren't rocking the spandex and the sequins then? Uh, I was not, Steve. No, I was not. <laughs> don't, don't do that to me. I'm the working, disappointment working is well. palpable. It really yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to save those pictures for another day. I'm afraid that's all i'm saying but yeah, no, um no that's it really that was that's all i did this this week fairly wow. fairly um fairly slim pickings i'm afraid so you have to fill the mm. time with something else now sorry right let's go on to um let's to ken ken what have you been up to mate uh hobby loft being priority number one yeah uh which was good to actually get it finished um painting wise trying to think what did i do I finished off that dwarf actually. To be fair, he got finished. Um, didn't take the, didn't take a picture of him. But well, the, what just, the hero quest dwarf? Yeah, the hero quest dwarf. Yeah. So I've only got one more character to do, uh, the she elf. So mm-hmm. that'll be All quite right. looking forward. Yeah, the witch elf. I'm quite looking forward to doing that. That'd be quite cool. Um, do, you know the, do, of... no, do you know the, the the bad guys? Are you going to batch paint them, or is everyone everything being done? Yeah, individually? yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's hard because there's a lot of them in there. So I was. I don't yeah. know. I might batch paint them. I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to go into as much detail with them. No, no, just no. Generic, just generic sort of things. But I haven't been printing anything off till now. Um, I'm printing off some stuff so ready for the next couple of weeks so for Christmassy sort of thing. I'm I'm printing off some reindeer for um, uh, my fins. So all I'm right. Print- Printing some reindeer. I thought you meant for going under the Christmas oh, tree. You know, I, can, I thought you were going to say that. Well, no, 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 for the Finns. So, like All the Christmas and the reindeers <laughs> for the for the Finnish army. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I'm using. So it's a lot of a uh, lot of pack reindeer packs and stuff like that going on bases and bits and bobs. So, oh, right. might as well, innit? It makes it a bit makes it something a bit different, doesn't it? So I'm printing some of them off at the minute. I'm printing off um, death like deathcore Cree sort of model. Sort of based around that, so the Ooh. ones that you completely destroyed because they're going to go towards bolter action. So like just a normal basic infantry, and I'm printing off. If you know, if you know much about the uh, thirty and forty k universe, here, I'm printing off my first ever custodian. All so, right, cool. So, so he's he's a bit bigger. Um, just in the lore, he's a bit bigger. But I've always wanted to paint one because they're just lots of gold. Lots yeah, I, lots I was going to say, it's just they're just walking gold. Like yeah, walking... they're based. A bit different hues of gold, so I'm, yeah. I'm going to use it to experiment. 
see what I can do with it. Um, That's cool. So it's just it's just a it's just a case of print what's on the plate, what, paint what's on the plate, sort of thing. If that makes sense. So I've got a mortar team printing as well. So for the fins, so that'd be nice. Get that sorted. Ken, that's the title of your video series for your channel: painting on the plate. Painting mm. on the plate. There you go. I might stick the mortar inside one of the sleighs. I'm thinking about that. Mm. Putting a mortar in a sleigh. So, Are you going to be doing bolt action with it with the fins? Uh yeah. So they're going to be they're going to be uh, used for bolt action. I'm also thinking. I, I'm debating because I've got a lot of 28 mil stuff for battle group, but mm -hmm. you're going to need a bigger table, really. Yeah. Um, than a normal six by four. So it's a case of do I then print the fins in 20 mil as well? Mm. So I could I could print an army in 20 mil. Um, yeah. and go that way for the battle group. So I would like I definitely want to play that because that was I got both the books and I printed out the tokens as well, which is quite cool. I'm looking forward to um getting into that that game was really good with robin i really enjoyed it yeah yeah robin yeah, 20, yeah. He, he, 20 mil even, the even though even though he, he he pocketed the chip for the uh stupor or whatever it was to turn up. <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> bastard oh. oh look you're not gonna believe what's come out <laughs> uh but yeah no i've got the arnhem book for that so it'd be quite cool to do some camp grouper um and stuff so yeah no that's kind of my week, but this week again, um, I'm actually going to take a break from uh, the loft and painting this week, and I'm actually going to go on my VR, which I've not been on for probably a year or so, and play a bit of Skyrim. I think it's going to be my my treat this week to have a little break for having the loft done. You've had the loft done. You've done yeah. the loft, and like most people, would be desperate to get in and get to use it, and you're going to do the opposite. Yeah, I'm just going to have a break. I like to. Yeah, I'll have a break. Otherwise, I'll just get annoyed with it and be like, "I need that something it just annoy me." Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, that's me all over. That is Dom. That is. That is. Beware the over. beware the attack of the ginger. That was how that was how my character died last year in Jason and Carla's. Um, Christmas game well, that involved yeah. us for. I, I, I was it? I was killed by like demonic gingerbread men and walking <laughs> presents. Were. It was very very it, funny. It was horrific. I've never, I've never, I, I was actually traumatized watching that. It's nothing worse than seeing you, the fantasy <laughs> the fantasy version of yourself being killed by a gingerbread you, man. Have you ever seen the film starring <laughs> Gary Gary Boozy called The Ginger Dead Man? No. no. I've, I, it, it stars Gary Boozy as is is a, is an animated gingerbread man that goes on the killing spree. I, I'm not joking. You should look it up. <laughs> Go watch it. And then, but also make You're sure actually you're being legit serious about that. Yeah, I'll be legit mm. serious. There is there is a film called. The Do we Ginger need Dead some Man's of uh, Ken's Gary special uh, blend for that from his loft? Yeah. I keep, I keep getting recommended. I'm going to get the film. fucking police around here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting this film recommended to me, and it's about a killer sofa. What? Have you have you seen? Listen, that's the way, that's, have you seen? The, have you heard of a film called Rubber? No. It's a film about a killer tire, and the tire. <laughs> look, look, look. I'm not trying to. It's actually really. What the heck? Hang on, hang on. They, he, he, I'm sorry, but we're on weird shit right now. This is seriously weird shit. And there's, 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 what else would there be? there's one I keep seeing as well. It's about um, I, when llamas attack, like like demonic llamas. Yeah, because that happens a lot, doesn't it? Demonic well, llamas. I think it probably happens that, more than, than a, a possessed a, sofa. Fair point. Fi, I'll give you that. Isn't there a film out of the minute in the cinema that's something to do or something to do with a killer elf or something like that? Nightmare on there's, Elf. Uh, there, there's one called Vi uh, no, there's there's one called Violent Night, which is like about just that's uh, it, that's uh, it. Yeah. David Har Harbour beating people with um, as Santa Claus. Yeah, that's it. Ah. That's the one. Nothing says Christmas like that. Jeez. Absolutely not. Um, moving swiftly along from demonic gingerbread man, Martin, <laughs> what have you been up to? <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, this week ended up being a bit, bit of a bust, really, because, uh, well, last week, rather, because um, I had everything planned out to do, and I was going to, if you remember, I was working on the big unit of Blackguard, and oh, I was yeah. going to have them formed, you know, um, that didn't really go anywhere, because unfortunately, on, on Tuesday, um, I had, uh, I had uh, just some issues with, with, a, with a client, and which meant that I had to write a report 
uh, in the evening. So all I achieved last week was writing a 45,000 word report in about four days and drink a lot of coffee. Um, but so, have you got, um, have you got, yeah. have you got any pictures? <laughs> I, I could, but I'm presuming that people here don't want to fall asleep if they haven't already. Yeah. Um, I, I did take a break because on, on Wednesday, on Wednesday night, um, I got to the point where I couldn't do any more work um, without um, some graphics being, being completed. Um, so while those were being completed, I went round to my friend's house, Kev, and I got to play, which was great fun, the Masters of the Universe. Yes! <laughs> and I had a brilliant time. Yeah, um, when, once we realised how, how, how to play it, because the... Uh, the first time we um we played it um we played it rather wrong and um and, and how did you know you played and how did you know you played it wrong though martin because my friend was winning and he never wins yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bless him it was um, no it was my buddy i was playing with uh, my mate kev uh my buddy luke who put on the um Burrows and Badgers game at CrackCon, uh, and Luke just has a tendency to roll really badly, even worse than me. And he and he was just running around the battlefield with Skeletor, just knocking heroes left and right. It was like this. This doesn't. So you know, you play enough games, eventually, like something that something's not right here. Um, so we had a quick reshuffle and had to look at it. Went ah, yeah, no, you shouldn't have been able to do that at all. Let's let's re rack it all up again and start again. Um, and it's just it is really good fun. It has a really nice little. Um, sort of mana system built into it where you generate mana to cast your spells and do actions. So it was it was good fun. I I had, I had a great time. You enjoyed yeah, yourself. The universe. I did enjoy myself. Um so yeah no that was that that was good fun. But I'm working on my Blackguard tonight. Um and I hope so I should have these finished. So hopefully by next week I'll have actually have a whole batch of stuff finished. Um, I did some editing when I finished the report, got the battle report up, <laughs> and then I've got another um game tomorrow with Miller and Robin. So that's oh, nice. Be. Did you, did you make any but... did you make any purchases sweet mine you mean that yeah i got that behind me <laughs> i'm not gonna do what you do i like they can see it it's lovely I... man hello everybody and welcome nice. to the resin crack podcast i haven't said it i'm not gonna it's it's sitting there it's doing what it needs to do for why for for my for my needs which are very different to ken's <laughs> Are you, are you quite thankful for that, Martin? You've got different needs than to Ken. I know, it's, I know, I know. She went very in there. Thankful. which are very different, to Ken. Very different. Very, needs very, to Ken. very. Yeah, different. yeah you're not, oh, no, you're not that, that does sound like slightly sordid now. Um, oh, I, I went to the pub to watch the football for the first time in about ten years because my mate was there, so I went along with him, um, and um, and I got to witness like the like over an hour and a half the gradual degeneration of human beings into just like drooling drunken <laughs> beasts again, which was quite fun. Uh, and then, <laughs> yes, yeah, so that that was that was my week. Uh, as a question for you, Martin. Week. Just to confirm. Well, yes, it is. But I never said I was. I, I said I was going to get one. It's just, um, like I say, I don't think they're going to replace anything. It's just there. To, it's there doing a specific job for me at the minute. There you go. That's what you get in till, till I can. Yeah, till there's other stuff happening. Is that is that, <laughs> is that the, the thinking man's approach to three D printing? Yeah, I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not getting rid of any of my plastic. I'm, I, it's there to because. There, there are models that I would like that are um, that are 3D sculpted, like the Reconquer models. And I've checked out, and I think I've spent so much money on Reconquer models, I could have bought that. So <laughs> you know, I was just a bit like, well, you know, I, I'm spending a lot of them. He's not showing any signs of stopping. I'm probably going to buy more. Um, there's terrain stuff, and then there's there's other things that I'm doing, which I'm not going to. No matter how much he goes me, I'm not going to say. Well, I I had um, quite a product. What are the sc oh. I think that's for the uh, the black. Guard. Oh, um, they're really Blackguard, good. Yeah. They're really good. These are these are what I think Don would call the perfect sculpt uh, because mm -hmm. they they are a body, two arms and a head. That's it. Um, they are pretty. I don't want to say simple. I'm not. I don't mean that as an insult. I, I, I think that's a good. You know, they're straightforward. You got some that are just wearing robes, and then you got um, a third of them wearing like leather armor, padded armor. Um, and they've all just got spears, so it's very, very easy to to paint, and they look good at the end of it. To be honest, mm -hmm. so um, I think it, I, I don't know. Do you, do you know what I mean? It's just really there's not no frills, straightforward miniatures. If that makes sense. It's funny. I saw some comment. I mean, a, I just correct you. Almost the perfect sculpt, because obviously they'd be metal if they were perfect, oh, um, no. and one piece. Um, but I saw. Yeah, I don't know. That's. 
I saw a comment online and um, on on some Facebook page, sort of hinting that they weren't impressed with the sculpts, which seems surprising because you said how you thought they were pretty good, and most of them, their you? range are pretty no! good. No, fuck's sake! I just spilled a whole pot of wash. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow. Uh, uh, We'll, we'll carry on. We'll, 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 what was that? Do you want to so give what, studio? Um, do you want to give studio a, a bit of a yellow card here, or what? I um, yeah, just no, oh my god, no, I'm not going to be printing anything at six mil. No, no, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> or painting it again for a long time. Um, no, there. I don't know what what, but what more do you want? I don't get it. Like no. it's, but they they're very similar to the Fireforge mod. Uh, not, yeah. These are the uh, the um, dripping beast. Gripping Beast. These are very, these are Fireforged. They're, they're very, very similar to Gripping Beast. They do the job. Mm -hmm. They're going to fill out your ranks. Of, yeah. and, and if you then want to pop in some Perry's or some of the um, some of the more dynamic Fireforged models or the Reconquer models, because they've got some Blackguard models as well, where you've got like yeah. like a priest who's like um, like like calling the charge, and you've got some guys running forward. Then you can mix them all in. Um, <laughs> but but for rank and file troops for historical wargaming, where you're building units of these guys not just using them for a skirmish game then absolutely i, I don't really see what the issue is yeah i agree i'll tell you I what really <clears throat> and to be fair any fire forge miniatures i've seen have been really really nice yeah. really really lovely sculpts. Yeah, agreed a a absolutely absolutely um like uh the six bait you can't see him but there's six bases of zulus that are just awaiting their uh their tufts next to me here so i've had i've got lots of models that's all sort of got there Hey, what's that? Uh, the cost of buying princess is buying a printer. Um, at the moment, a mounted miniature is like what, what is it, double five or six quid a miniature, depending mm -hmm. on bulk, in it. So, if yeah. you're buying, yeah, so if you do, do do the mass and if you want a unit of 12, it's like nearly 60 quid for a mounted yeah. unit, and they do look amazing. And you know, I'd argue, well, I'm, I'm spending money anyway, so I wouldn't, you know, I'm not, I could probably buy that and justify it somewhere in my head. Um, and um, <laughs> but um. Yeah, so if you think that unit, yeah, and I've done, I've done the whole, I've done a whole mounted unit, I've done the whole crossbow unit. Dom, you've done the cat, the camel cavalry. It does seem yep. to rack up, and they are nice, but I tend to order them like a bit here and a bit there. Like I've got this, that I'm going to put on a base. I've got a wounded Norman uh, knight, you know, but he mm. was he was five pound fifty. I added him to an order just to bulk something out a little bit. Um, so so yeah, it does. The, you know, the cost of it, and then the cost of printing them. I haven't really. I, I, I refer you back to what Ken was talking about before because I haven't I've only printed like two things at the moment and one of those was a box to see if it worked. <laughs> uh, well, my, my week last week <clears throat> was odd and quite productive. It's a bit, a bit of a no, no World War Two stuff. It's just a bit. Mm. I started off with my favourite models of all time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. Um. I, I, they, do you know how long it took me to paint those? I mean, literally from grey plastic to that. Oh, 10 minutes. Well, not, not quite 10 minutes. It was just about about 90 minutes <laughs> to go amazing, from grey grey plastic to fully based 90 minutes because it's, 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 they're the easiest things I think I've ever painted. Um, <laughs> it's weird. Like when you when I'm doing them, ninety percent of the time is building them and putting the feet on. I was going to say, it, how much of that is putting the feet on? And about how much is swearing and breaking? <laughs> about six hours worth. They're just <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I might have to do a vampire count's army if when the new fantasy comes back. If they're that quick of bloody paint, Jesus. Let's get well, yeah, well, I'm th I'm actually thinking I've got to do a unit of eight spearmen sometimes. I'm going to do them. I'm f I'm tempted to see if I can paint sixteen in one go because it's literally prime uh, army paint of bone, wash, dry brush, and that's it. That is literally mm. all it is. So I'm hoping to get masses done. Um, but. After I finished them, I was on a bit of a um an uh, these are these are for Warlords of Era one, not um fancy battle. But this is a games workshop figure. And it's it's a necromancer. That oh. is one of the most I remember they had a novel uh with the actual artwork of that guy on the front, and he's still just a he's just an awesome miniature. I love that. His face is great, isn't it? It's a brilliant I I he's done a I really, sat down really and, good job on him. Cheers, man. I, I sat down, I painted that over two nights. And it was just, there was no kit bashing. It was just a figure, plastic figure, as is, 
just painting and I I thoroughly no you just enjoy painting one mm. miniature and spend a bit of time on it. I thoroughly enjoyed painting that. It was just such a it's a it's a great it's full of character. It, it, it looks like a right evil old git. He really does. <laughs> I'm just gonna quickly um I've just I've seen that comment by Alex mm -hmm. uh, Alex and we'll pop that up later. But I've got I've got to come back on that because I think me and him are going to be at opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that could be in the uh, grind your gear yeah. type, of, um, but yeah. So that that guy there is going to be the the leader of my undead war band. I've got the two um, skeleton guard. They're not actually his actual skeleton guard. There's two. I painted a couple of months back. I need to make him some guard. Or if anyone can can give me any suggestions for any other brands out there that do evil skeletons holding spears that could that could work as his bodyguard, um, I'd be grateful for any suggestions. Um, so then, then, then I, got, I did some more line rampant as well. Um, so oh. I've done what what I mentioned oh. on the Facebook group on Saturday is I'm not going to paint up nationalities. I'm going to do generic medieval warriors. And then um, Darren, who, who posted in my own Facebook group, said just build up command stands with with the nationality. Yeah, uh, yeah. and that's, that's the perfect way, way to go. Um, so. I, oh. I, last week I completed a unit a crossbow. Ta -da. Nice. Very cool. Oh, nice. I'm quite, I'm quite shocked. Very with those. nice. I mean, um, reality, I started... reality for that period, there was very little national difference anyway. Exactly. Once you remove the banners, it's not an awful lot of difference. So no. I think you're on, you're onto a safe wicket there. Look so lovely. That, that's just they're just Perry's. Me painting Perry miniatures and not cutting them into pieces. What is going on here, people? What's going on? Hmm. Um, the universe has just sighed. That it's all back in balance again. It's fine. But as you can see, I've been experimenting with my photography. Um, because yeah, man, that's good. Do you, Ken, do you, that, that's a model railway background. I was going to say that's a back scene. It is. It's a Hornby one. Ooh. And all I did was I glued it to a piece of cardboard and shoved it in the back of my light box. Um, well, it's well, doesn't it? And it works really, really. But the only thing I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed about is... The big massive blood just you can see the thing of glue where it's not dried properly above his head. Oh no. <laughs> um you, you can't really you can't really notice it. Nah. And there's the there's the we can now you pointed it out up to that point yeah. you couldn't see it. I sure I sure just <laughs> shut up. Do you know what I did with these with the crossbows? I think um I used some of the arms from the um uh, the, 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 yeah, the mercenary set and I've just put those on hundred years war bodies and they yeah. work really well. Yeah, they they Think, is there any the more kit thing. that's more useful than the no, Perry Mercery kit? No, it's used, no, you can use it for everything. It's that's, Mar that's Martin's absolute go to god kit from plastic. To Perry, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It has every, everything on it. It's even got the gesturing, pointing hands and things like yeah. that, you know, just to, you know, it's extraordinary. Oh, here's a suggestion. Cro Frostgrave armored skeletons. Hmm. Yes, I might have to have a look at those. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, yeah, that's I what doing... I used. I got a bunch <coughs> of those because that's what I used. To, you know, the cult, the cult, they're the cultists. They're on the yep. cultists brew. So unless they've got a new box, but you could, you had they had skeleton heads mixed in on the cultists. Ah, brew, didn't they? right. Yeah, I've got some of those left. I'll have a look at those. Uh, cheers, Jim. Like I said, it was um, me channeling my inner model railway person by cutting up a um uh, a mm. backdrop mm -hmm. I thought it was all very blue peter i had card scissors and pva glue i was very <laughs> very happy <laughs> it was just oh, it was a bizarre bizarre way to spend a um a saturday afternoon um, was that when you were drinking elvis oh no brucey wasn't it you were drinking brucey it was yeah i was, I was saturday night um these are they're for warlords of Erewhon. um so it's it's written by Rick Priestley, and it's essentially it uses the same um, activation. It's fantasy mechanic. bolt it's, action. Yeah, it's fantasy bolt action, but it's completely, completely miniature agnostic. Um, you can use. I mean, I'm, I've, I'm using figure for my for my knight army. I've used Warlord Landsknecht, Fireforge Knights, and Perry Knights for my um, my um, knights army. With my skeletons, I'm using um, those ones from War Games uh, Factory. I've got some man. In fact, the mantic ones. I'm actually working on a, a mantic skull catapult. Oh right, um, I've seen and, that. And, yeah, that's cool. 
and I painted the crook yesterday, and they're so nice. They're really good. And this guy's got a telescope. There's nothing better than a skeleton looking through a telescope while operating a catapult that throws skulls. You literally can't go wrong with that. Ooh. Do you know what a couple of, Andy? That's really interesting because um, a couple of people have recommended GW Undead stuff. I know uh, Matt Mail did on Saturday. He said, have a, have a look at the new GW you know, Undead Skellies. They're, um, they're rather wonderful. So, uh, after, yeah. But I mean, I did enjoy painting the Necromancer. That was a, a really, lo really lovely model to paint up. So, yes, I shall write all of these. <laughs> <laughs> written by Rick Priest he could cover about 60% of rural sets released in the last true. 20 years very true it's very 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 difficult to argue with that statement to be honest it's, and it's true it's very true um, so that was my week uh, what have I got planned I've got more skellies um, to paint up um, but they don't take very long to do I want to get that catapult done as well and a bit more line rampant as well so that's my that's my week Right, let's, let's get the, uh, the thingy-me-doodle back so we know exactly who we are and who's what. Thingy-me-doodle. There you go. Okay, so on to the bread and butter of tonight's chat. <laughs> Basing and... If I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the other one. I'm going to start with what grinds your gears. So this is specifically around the painting and the modelling side. What is it that, that makes you just want to cry or put your fist through walls or destroy your desk what 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 can you go to the top of your head can you can you guys each name one that annoys you all right uh you know um uh, uh, uh some models that are holding rifles and you have the, the they're generally all right-handed and you have the left yep. arm that you've got to put underneath and then it all this always happens if you're using poly cement they start to just do this and it goes down so you have to hold it there for a certain amount of time and then you think you've got it so you leave it, and then you look at it five minutes later, and they're just sort of like this. They're sunk. Uh, and then and then you're, like, forcing them up again. Obviously completely avoidable, because I could just spend longer and make sure that it's secure. <laughs> but, that's what, but I don't. That's what grinds my gears. And always, I swear I swear to God, I manage, because there'll be multiple left arms that are slightly different, and I manage to miss oh. them. Um, so, so it doesn't quite. And I'll be thinking, why, why isn't this this fitting? Yeah. That, there you go. That's mine. Just, just, just the um, the left arm on sort of rifle arm troops or, or anything. And that always tends to sort of be like this. That's precisely why I've never attempted Soviet by Warlord Games. Don't because no, just don't because there's no way. I'm, I'm no, no pain. Lots of pain. pain. Yeah, just no. Go on, then, Ken. What's yours? What what grinds your gears? Um... So when you're putting a plastic kit together and you've, you, it probably doesn't bother a lot of people, but when I've got to fill gaps in with mini part and stuff like that, mm. I don't, it drives me insane. Um, I don't like seeing the gaps there. So yeah, that, that's, uh, that's my gearing grinding situation when it comes to that sort of thing. It's similar to Martin as well with the, not so many left hands being utilized. Yeah. Mm. And you generally tend to, I, I get it wrong nine times out of ten. I'm like, that's got to yeah. work. And when you put it on, his arms up there and his rifles down there. It's like, yeah, that's not right, really, is it? I just look slightly odd when he's like that. Yeah, and then you pull them apart. I know Leslie's just said I don't use the right side. What am I using? I'm using uh, Revel. Humble. Is it Revel? Yeah, yeah Revel, uh, Revel stuff. stuff at the minute. Yeah, I'll use that. That's all I, could, that's all I could find on Amazon. <laughs> you need to get yourself some super glue. I have super glue. I use super glue. I just don't tend to use it on plastic on on plastic models. Uh, I use it for everything. I've even said my bedside table's put together with super glue. I couldn't be asked screw it together. So I, just, I, I just glued it all together with super glue. No use to. That's I can believe that's true. It's like who needs a drawer anyway? It's just a wooden box to put my books and a lamp on. Get the glue. I don't. I don't need sliders and things like that balls to it now so i just i literally just got a, a, a tube of super glue and glued glued the entire um thing together oh my god do you like do you like my painted mdf palette ken he's just turned up in the chat there you go <sighs> go on no, then Dom. palette uh what, i think, what, I, think what, I think we know what yours is going to be but you know all it of it be different all of it all, all of it Honestly, all of it. I just, I, I hate putting the models together, painting uh, it, painting it, 
anything plastic. No, I could do without any of it. Play in it. <laughs> Occasionally, you know, like those Norman figures, I'll get figures that I really enjoy painting. But on the whole, I could do without all of it, to be honest. No. <laughs> Just no. that's pretty much cover that covers the board. If yeah. you end the podcast, now. sorry, mate, I'll just finish it there then. All right, good night, everyone. Yeah, night, everyone. Yeah, see you. No, talk, but talk, uh, talk. definitely the assembling of those kits, like you're talking about, that that just yeah, overly complicate. Why the freaking hell do they have to do that? Like, you know, just one hand missing of a figure when they've got the rest of them all with their or you know, all your ankle joints on them. Yeah, it's like, why? Why do that? It just makes absolutely no sense to me. I will admit those those skeletons with the plat with the separate feet. I, I I could sit down from now until doomsday, and and still not be able to work out why. I mean, there's there's probably a perfectly reasonable there's, sense there's of there's no, no sense there's of really. it, but no, there's no. It can't possibly. I mean, what is the logic of that at all? What are you going to do? Turn down, the feet come, around the other come way, down, or probably come down to cost. No, because the thing is that. Only certain, only I never, I never thought this phrase had ever come out of my mouth ever. Only certain ankles fit certain feet. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what is of, the point of that? Do you know? I reckon of, it was. Uh, I, I reckon it, it was. Um, what's the name? Rubicon invented that kit. Secretly came in and built that kit. They went. How can we put some extra bits into this kit? <laughs> I know. Let's make every metatarsal of the foot separate and have to build them together. I mean, you know, I'm still, what, what I'm they I'm doing. Speaking, speaking of Rubicon, I'm still waiting for the day that Huey comes out. Oh, it looks so good. It looks so good. Right. I've only really got one that that, that really, really... Uh, and I think I've, I've just seen several people mention it in the um, chat. Mold lines. I hate them. I absolutely despise mold lines. And it's not that I hate... It's, it's that I miss them. Yes. I could spend ages cleaning up a model... Uh, I can paint it, and I can get to make a video. And I'll go, how the bloody hell did I miss that? And it's like a, a four-mile mold line down some dude's trouser leg or something. I'm like, how how on yeah. earth did I miss how that? Did, how did it's, you miss it? It's like it's, it's, blind, it's, it's the like video spots it, isn't it? You, yeah. there's, I see them as well. You think, I've checked it over. I know exactly. There's none left. And then you, you play back the recording you've done, you get... There's a frigging mold right through his head. How did I miss that? Oh, yeah, I, did, I did that when I did that when I painted the elephant, and I, I didn't realise this. Why I looked at the thumbnail <laughs> when I posted the video, uh, and it was after that. And then the first comment, the very first comment, was you, did, you didn't get rid of the mold lights. <laughs> I mean, I know we're up, we're on our own our own worst critics at time, but some of them just stand out. Some of them just yeah. they just. But I I just hate removing them, and I hate when. It's it's on a part where you've got to do your best not to ruin the thing that's underneath, like a, a pocket or a fold in a, in a trouser. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. Um, it just no, it, it's just apart from, apart from that, I'm painting French Napoleonic drum drums. They can just go to hell. I don't care. <laughs> uh, I, I will not. I will never paint another one of those. Ever. As, as long as I live, I'll never paint. Actually, I'm not going to say that because I probably will end up painting one one day. Let's see what people have else have found. So James L. Multi basing he finds challenging. I can I can certainly see that. I can see that. I love multi basing and now find it really hard to single base miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I really do. I just like multi basing. I I love it. I like putting units together and then working out how to you know how to create interesting scenes. If I could go back, if I had the time and the inclination to go back and rebase all of my Napoleonics, I would. Um, and not just have them in in rank. So I'd have like a lot of it ranked, but I would have some other things going on. Like I'd mix in some more casualties. I'd have the line perhaps wave it wavered a bit because it's mm. bloody dead straight. Or there's a big rock that someone had to go around. Um, I'd rebase all <laughs> of my cavalry onto multi. I, I've got two on a base. I'd rebase all those to free to a base um, and make the and make again make them look a bit more. Don't you know how not have all the horses in lines. Have one forward, one back slightly, and uh, I'd redo it, which is what I do now. Um, with the crusade stuff and, and i've started to do with the water roses stuff um but i yeah i, I love multi-basing it can be challenging um but i i, I think the the thing with, with multi-basing is if you're if you're doing multi-basing a lot of games it doesn't really matter how many models are on the base no in that's just that's the main yeah really why would it, it, why is, does it, it, matter it if you're if you're multi-basing so it, it, once you kind of get your head out of that space that there has to be for example four models and a 40 by 40 you you could then then you can just cut you can just go wild 
can't you? You could do what you want, and once you get your head out of that, I think it makes life well, that's a lot like, easier. Is it, is it Kings of War? It's just a base size, and you can put yeah as yeah. much as much as yeah. you want on it, basically. Yeah, I've I've got a massive one where I've got a I did a road down the middle, and I've got a I've got the hand gunners on the wings, and because it was an Empire unit, it's, it's it's good fun. It's good fun, but I can understand initially how it can be quite daunting. daunting. I've got this many models, and yeah. this, how do I get them onto these bases? My answer is just don't don't try it. Get on what you can, and it will look cool. It's a bit like what I'm doing with these Black Guard. There's only 25 miniatures, so I'm trying to make them represent a large unit by changing their formation and how they look on the bases rather than by trying to cram more models on there. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it's not just me. Uh, removing mold lines, absolutely. Um... Hate them. Don't Hate get them. Mo- you don't get mold lines with 3D printing, Steve. Quiet, quiet you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get the supports they have to work through. You have to clear them off. Uh, uh, Andy painting muskets, rifles, etc. That's a that's yeah. Um oh okay, god, I wouldn't like this. Painting 15 millimeter shields. Ow! Oh, that's what little big man's for. <laughs> <laughs> what 15 mil? Do they do 15 mil ones as well? They do 15 mil. It must be something that's ah. 15 mil. All oh, right, okay. I don't, I don't know. know. Um probably gluing is it's one for you, Dom. Gluing figures, especially ones not attached. I'm with you, Alex. Absolutely <laughs> bloody right. What's All right. That? Gluing, gluing figures. F- gluing figures. Do you know yeah. oh, someone what, else the thing that the amazing. most frustrating thing in the world? Super glue. You're a, you're an aficionado, Steve, of super glue. I am. It's I not. Like it doesn't glue. work as well as it used to, does it? It just never. You know, he, he uses, uses the gel metal. though, doesn't he? I use the gel. Well, well I use gel. I've used gel. everything, and it bloody the, the 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 gel gives you a bit of time to work with. Um, but it it it, it, it like you say it bonds. It's like um that episode of Bottom where Richie glues his underpants on. <laughs> um, I imagine I imagine super glue gel would definitely well, work for that. But glue works. Um, super glue works brilliantly with flesh. Oh, it does. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, um, I, metal. Does it relate to that? It, it does it indeed. Yeah. Comment there, but because I I've got those and I prefer it. So <laughs> that's fine. I Ooh. I'm a bit like I'm a bit like Robin. I I have a tendency to cut the integral bases off of my miniatures now before I base them. Get that. And I know we'll come on to this into the basing. That's just too much um, like work. <laughs> no, it doesn't take any time at all. It makes life easier. And I, I can make the base without having to do all of that work. We'll talk about this in the basing, I'm sure. But right hell, here, I, get to, I make all my bases. This, this will be fully made. And then I just stick the models on it. I don't have to work around just, their legs and do all of that. I can just, I make the base and I stick the models on it. I think I'll it. live on another planet to you lot. Dom, the sheer look of incredulity on just your face now. You it's something to behold it really. Not all the time. Not all the time. Some, like, you know, I, I'd never, uh, if they're, like, if I want to do a model on a road, I did, and it's on a cobble road. I have to cut him off his base, aren't I? Because you've got the pudding base. Now that's like... different. If you do something like that, I have been. Mm. I mean, I did some on some rubble bases. I think one that was yeah. a Hungarian World War Two army, and I had rubble bases, and I cut all the feet, and it was a pain in the arse because yeah. they were all yeah, metal as well. Cavalry, I don't tend to do it because you've got a very small contact point. But when you've got a mm. foot, it's a tangible contact. Yeah, point. It's, a, it's, a, it's a good like, surface area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And unless the person's like flinging themselves through the air or something then oh. i just stick him stick him into it i use that basing paste and half of the time that holds them in place anyway i put rocks on the bases i don't glue them on i just put them in the basing paste and that mm-hmm. holds them yeah painting hair i hate painting hair i just, I just yeah contrast <laughs> contrast 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 yeah. contrast. <laughs> yeah. That's the it's just contrast um it's all from Miller. Don't mind painting horses. I do. I hate them. Painting the saddle and the sheet underneath is always a pain. Rest of the horse. I, I, don't really I like mind. doing that. I like painting the saddle and the sheet. I don't like painting the horse. On I the find opposite. the saddle bit just a bit tedious. I can't yeah, I, the horse. I just find that bit tedious. No, right. I like being able to make like um, like you can make something of it. Like you put a line around it, like to make it in something a bit different. I'm saddles. starting to, I think because I haven't painted horses for a long time since my Napoleonic thing, I'm actually enjoying them a bit more, but I haven't painted any Napoleonic. Well, actually, that's no, a lie. I did paint, paint those Marmalukes. They were fun, but I think the no, that was a, there were six of them and it was a novelty because they had like massive feathers coming out of them and stuff like that. So <laughs> it didn't really count. But, um, yeah, I, d- I don't know. Again, I for any other period, I seem to be fine. It's what, once, you, once in Napoleonic, I seem to have an issue. I think it's because generally the saddle there's more recruited there's like holsters there's 
like that, I don't know what you call it, but there's a bit of fur in there on there as well, like on the front and then at the back, yeah. and then there's the, the saber, and then there's the, and I can't remember what's it called, the thing that hangs down with the saddle, like the black, what's it called, the sabotage? Is that what yeah, it's called? Sabotage, I think. Yeah. Is, but do you, yeah. so the question is, do you, do you, I, I always paint those up separate and then stick them on afterwards because they just get in the way. Um, so I, I can't, that's all part of that part of it. So I think that's why I hate the Napoleonic cavalry. I just, so I just, I just don't like them. Uh, yeah, Don's obviously um, also experienced that plastic Soviet set. Ooh. No, I, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Um, sand coming off dry brush and bases makes spending money on textured resin bases worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Varnish frosting. Oh yeah, that's a ball lake. Oh, that can be a pain. Yeah. Uh, Dom is one for you. Drilling hands out to receive a metal oh, spear. Nice. <laughs> Although, I did, Although I did pick up on 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 Amazon a, a cheap little Chinese drill thing, little handheld thing, and it's um, mm -hmm. that's been really useful. Although now I find that half the time the bloody hands come off when you're drilling them. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> Those gripping beast figures we did for that charity yeah. auction for Don. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, so from Jonas, mold lines, line infantry and yeah, tank road wheels. Yeah, they I when, with my um with my, my desert tanks, I've just painted them like dust and then put some weathering pigments over them so I don't have to paint them because I'm lazy. So we still are we still on what grinds our gears here? <laughs> yeah, well we're gonna run through these and we get on the base. I've, I've got no, no. to go on. Oh, well, I, I, I thought no. you had the suggestion. No, I was going to say internal tank components of engines and things like that. <laughs> I, Why? What's the point? Why, the that, Star Wars that, one's and, going and, to mine, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I know. And I wasn't even going to do the Rubicon. I was going to do the Star Wars one, which was great. Oh, it's, yeah. it's the worst kit I've ever put together, but one of the most fun that I've had to paint. Um, and it was horrendous. 219 parts, um, just because you can then see through it. You can see the engine in there. Um, I was just like, why? I, I just, I just wouldn't care. I didn't, I didn't buy this. I bought this tank because it looks like a snail, not because it looks like. <laughs> not because I want to see. Not because I want like you know the man, like the, the, the manual that shows how it works. Like, why is there an axle? Why do I need to see the axle? It's like oh, a, a, a haze manual for the fucking for the tank. Yeah, I get, I get that some people want to have them blown up and sit and see those parts, but. Like, can't you just have like a panel that you stick in with all this yeah. stuff pre molded? Yeah, I don't, be, I'm with you there. That's just... It reminds me of that time I spent I spent ages and ages building the axles and the chassis on that Puma, and I realised I I glue things to bases, so no bugger's going to see it. It's just complete. It's on there. I know it's there. You can't see it though. And it was a, it was a complete. Waste yeah. Of so time. here's the thing with that kind of thing. Do you, if you know that something's not going to be seen. Do you leave it out, or do you feel you have to put it in? Same with painting. Yeah. Paint, no, painting's weird. If I, 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 when I was painting, I was painting a crewman for this universal carrier. You can't see his back or his trousers, but I painted them anyway because I knew they were painted. I'm just, I'm but just not like that. Because <laughs> I, I, I used to be like that, and then I, um, again with the cavalry when I did my ECW cavalry, I just because I used to paint the horse and the rider separately, and obviously mm. you paint all the bits. The, or the saddle and that that are underneath the rider, and then I was sort of like, well, "Why? Because yeah, <laughs> you're going to cover you're going to cover it all. Like, 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 like why? There's no there's no detail there's no extra detail there that I can't get to. <laughs> They're pretty straightforward. But it's a bit like the Perry Knights. I you know I did them separate, and I was thinking I was like, well, well why? They're all metal. Yeah, yeah. Like, I did exactly metal. the same. <laughs> <clears throat> it's one from Leslie. Mold lines on metal figures that go down the face. I have never, never understood that. Never. Yeah, no. I mean, no. a sculptor must know, or the mold makers must know, that that is just the most stupid place to put it. So, but why do they do that? I don't, I don't understand it. I don't know. There can be no legitimate reason for doing that. Well, it depends, uh, I guess, on the pose of the model. Because if they, you can't always put the model so it's face down. Because if, it, if it's on like a side, you know, a, 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 like say an advanced pose, where mm. it's it, the profile of the model, they like they do light on its side, and I guess sometimes because you don't know what else is in the mold, and if you've got right. other things in the mold, yeah, I guess that would just be, yeah, be yeah. part of it. I don't mold know. lines on faces, like you're yeah. a professional. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, figure out a better yeah. mold placement. I just to me, it's it's about the placement on the mold. They could do that another yeah. way. I'm sure they could. There's uh, one from Dan. Um, force himself to do back. Yeah. He loves painting single minis, but never complete an army. That that used to be my problem years ago, is that I would I'd work on I mean I batch paint small now, uh depending on what the project is, but 
yeah, the thought. I remember when we were having a, I was having a discussion with Sean at CrackCon about batch painting, and he said that the, the minimum he batch paints is fifty. Um, <laughs> and I, I developed chest pain shortly after. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking a rather strange um, IPA, so that, that that might have accounted for it. But yeah, fifty. He, he paints in batches of fifty. Jeez. God, I, I, I don't know. I don't I mind. Just... I don't mind the paint painting Napoleonic great coats in batches. They're straightforward. I just I don't know. I think for me, I get bored. I get I get bored by about the seventh or eighth, and by the tenth, it looks like I don't know. I, I, I've been so like, bored. like I've been using my feet in the dark. <laughs> See, I, I sort of split the difference. I do them by bases, so I'll do six, and mm -hmm. then I'll get them ready to the point that they're on the base, and then I'll start the next six, and then while they're drying, I'll start putting the other ones on the base. So you kind of while well, one of the but one while the base yeah. load is drying, mm -hmm. I'll be doing. So I kind of do I will do them by the base, and you get to see that unit. Sort of yeah, that's together. that's my um, route as well. I'll do exactly yeah, the same. I, yeah, I, I just oh. I, and now with my piece, I kind of treat every base as its own sort of thing because again, when you're multi basing, command groups kind of and things like that sort of cease to exist unless you're like say you're doing Napoleonics and you, for example, really want to show the like the Grenadiers where they would be and the Voltigeurs where they would be. Um, you can just kind of do what you want and then just put all of those bases together to make your unit. Do you know what I mean? So you can. Mm -hmm. I think it, you find I find that I build things a lot quicker, and I I get through things a lot quicker if I if I do that little rotation. So I get six or whatever it will be, paint those up so they're done, get a base ready, start the base, and then while that's drying in the pace, I'll start the next six, and then you know a couple of days later the whole the whole unit's ready to go. Because yeah, yeah, I can see how you lose steam, and I have I've lost steam before when you've got oh, like yeah, twenty five yeah. of them, and you're yeah. just like oh god. Yeah, I'm with you. I think I like the fact that then you can see the unit building up. So you know your target is to put a 24-man unit. And if you do them in sixes, you know, six, first six done, and then you move on to the next yeah. six. And, and before you know it, the 24 are done. It's um, yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, but but yeah, you feel like you've achieved, definitely. Yeah, every time. Here's an, an interesting one from Owen. He hates painting tanks just so much to get oh. through. I They're my treat. Tanks are my yeah. treat at the end for painting something infantry-related. Never mind. Uh, if I can get if I can get through get through the infantry, I've got a nice tank waiting for him at the end. But I can I can certainly see why because you know what they are big. What is your treat? What's everyone's treat then? So Steve, yours oh, is yours my, is my, doing my, a tank my, or a vehicle my, or a bit tank, of vehicle yeah. or something. Uh, Ken, what's your what's your what's your treat when you're you're doing like a project? A, like, a character, character. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you, Dom? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Actually, that, that it changes. I mean, often it will be a vehicle or a tank because they're kind of fun. Um, yeah. But it, it can be just a particular medieval figure or something. It just—I don't know. I, yeah. I don't really know. It tends to be the old figure here and there. Mine's <clears> quite. <throat> um, I think mine's quite obvious. I, I like to just do command bases. I just like to mm. to do command bases or or some kind of um, objective, like the, using like the looters from bloody miniatures to make those little bases and. Or, or you know something like that, something a bit a bit unusual that I don't actually mm. know how I'm going to use in the game. <laughs> but yeah, you know what? I'm glad it's not just me that does that. I I, ha I have my set treats, and I'm I'm not going to touch the nice shiny thing until I've got through the boring stuff first. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely an incentive to get through it. Uh, but I imagine if that if I if I did play Napoleonics or um, sort of medievals, command bases for me would be the um, would be the treat. Yeah, after the line after the um, the, the line infantry. Um, one from Jeremy, painting flesh. Mm, oh, I can understand that. Flesh. I'm doing. I'm doing flesh right now. I go through Love stages where um, I'm good and then I'm crap. Like painting that the yeah. face on that on that necromancer. I was so chuffed with how because he actually looks like a face. He doesn't just look like a blob of pink paint. Like I can um, so my faces normally <laughs> look like. Yeah, I still <laughs> haven't got the. I still haven't got the the technique down for faces and skin. I want to. I'm still trying. I'm still trying to work out a good combination which free paints to use. I've got mine. I I base coat everything. I do well. I use what's it called? Ulf, Ulf one grey. Then I use dark oak flesh because it creates more contrast. I use some mid tone, any mid tone. It doesn't matter, like Kistler flesh or whatever is is around <coughs> from any paint manufacturer. Just a nice mid flesh tone, and then I use elf flesh for just doing like tip of the nose, tops of the cheeks, and the eye and the eyebrows, and they're done. My crowning moment was getting the eyes in Warwick's visor. 
Because <laughs> <laughs> I stripped oh, that was oh, 63 yeah. attempts. Huh? I know. I, 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 no, I did. I didn't. I didn't. I, I'll be absolutely honest. I, I got it first try and then I walked away and didn't do any more painting that evening. I just, <laughs> I did it. It was about eight o'clock and I thought, no, nope, that's okay, it. I'm done. Switched, sw sat down, switched every, you know, switched everything off, put it all away, went in there and sat with my wife. I was like, I'm done now. I'm just going to sit, it's going to sit and, and, uh, and then went ahead and tried to do that livery, which, because I knew that was going to be worse. But it, it I, I faces, I, I spent, I can't remember when I, I kind of, I think it was, um, what models was it that I was painting up? I think it was when I was doing my, um, I can't actually think. There was just, no, I did some army and I can't remember what, what, for what game it was. And there was just a lot of flesh. So I just sort of, sort of worked out a way to, to do it and sort of be, satisfied with it at the end and hope that it doesn't look too bad from too far away obviously if you zoom up close in their face they look like a picasso <laughs> ken this is meant to be about grinding gears i cut the heads of lancastrian figures no reason it just makes me feel better <laughs> absolutely <laughs> <laughs> bravo <laughs> oh, oh, dear dear me. Me. <laughs> what else we got here um Yes, now Alex this is interesting. Painting civilians because I can't choose the colours. I was thinking the other day about those those partisans I'm going to be painting soon. And I was like, I'm going to have to come up with some kind of system of rotation. Or, yeah, system. That like when I was painting yeah. landscapes, that's, that's, I yeah. was doing that's what I did. Paints. That's what I did. I did that, and I just, I just, I was like, right, I've got the blue one out. Right, you can have blue trousers. You're having a blue tie. You're having a blue jacket. Right, yeah. next paint. Yeah, go grab right. a third. You, da, da, da. And I just kept on going through. That's what I'll have to do. Is it? I actually find yeah. those sort of things even easier to do for exactly that reason. You just, you know, you get out whatever period you're doing. You think, well, those that sort of blue, that red, that green, whatever it is, is appropriate, and I just get those paints out, and they'll just rotate <laughs> but, around them. But why can't you do that then for fantasy? I don't know. <laughs> There's <laughs> absolutely no logic, Martin. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> there, there is no logic uh. at all. Okay, it's often Barnes painting metallics. Swords and spears. Could anyone recommend a really good range of metal? Oh, here's another one. Then God, let's God. share our metallic paints, chaps. Uh, I use. I think the best paint metallic paints that I use are Dark Star paints. Um, these these ones, um, which I think are lovely. Otherwise, I just tend to use the Vallejo Air metallics. Um, I just I've never had an issue with them. I, I just I just use those. I just use the gold, silvers, aluminiums. And all of that out of those, I just find them really easy to work with. I use two. I use two metallics. I use uh, Vallejo um, from the Game Color range, uh, Gun Metal, and I use Natural Steel to highlight. Uh, I normally put some kind of black or brown wash over them. Um, but yeah, they're they, they're my my two. I know. I know. I've never. I've, I've, well, I've never used it. Lead Belcher from Games Workshops meant to be really good, isn't it? I've, it is very good. It is very good. Yeah, oh. I'm, I'm, can I watch one of your? Um, Painting Knights videos, I think you were using lead, didn't you? Didn't you use lead belcher on those? Yes, I would have done. Yeah, it was, it was yeah, painting it per Perry's Knights, yeah. Yeah, it would have been lead belcher, yeah, because that would have been when I've had my GW paints. Yeah, lead belcher. No, I, I, I quite like lead belcher. Um, I don't like justifying the price for it, but um, the, the other stuff that I've just started using now actually is what I bought at the show. This gunmetal grey is pretty decent from Vallejo, yeah. Um, I use it, brilliant, yeah. The, yeah, it is, it is pretty good. And I've got an oily steel as well, which is nice. Um, and then I've just got a brass colour I'm just trying out at the minute. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with them, to be fair. They're, they're going on really nice. Um, it's not really a... I wouldn't say it's a metallic, but it's like an off-black colour, which I've really started using quite a lot, is uh, black-grey. Quite, quite like that yeah. as well. Um, if you don't want to do a metallic finish, you just want like... A, Sort of darker matte finish. Go with the black grey. Don, what do you use? I know you, you use a vast range of paints. What's what's your metallic? Yeah, I mean, choice. It, it depends what comes out when I put my hand in the pot. Really, in the box. Really, <laughs> um, I, I tend to use a lot of Vallejo for that, and Army Painters uh, for the sort of silvery colours. Um, but I'm I'm not that brand loyal, really. So it's just whatever happens to come along, really. 
if I'm honest. Now, you picked up some Dark Star paints, didn't you? Uh, I um... did, and I did use some of the gold the other day. The first, I had the first one I've used, and it was it was all right. Actually, it comes out quite nicely. That really bright gold, as you, yeah, uh, what is it called? Gold yeah, braid, braid, braid gold. Yeah, I'm using yeah. that to highlight. Um, but they, they, I find their paints fantastic. They're very. Um, they're not as thick as some metallics could be. Quite that was the one that caught with. me out with them. Is that it, it was very much waterier, if that's the word, yeah. than I was expecting. Um, so that, and I thought, oh god, they're going to be a bright nightmare to sort of get it to. But it doesn't seem to matter. It seems to seem to apply quite well. So the yeah. viscosity oh, was was uh, lighter than you expected. Is that right? Is that if you say so. Have <laughs> 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 you, you, you seen Ken's comment? <laughs> What's he put? He's put, I hate stupid names for paints. I have no <laughs> idea what colour knob scratcher snuff or gob or goblin bottom nose hair. Oh, tell me about it, mate. Jesus. <laughs> I just, the, you look at the colour on the bottom and that's, uh, oh, that's it. That's it. Uh, done, then, isn't it? it is a bit knobby. But I, I do, I think for my, um, for my nights, I found, um, I quite like, um, what is it called? Um, what's the, the, the grey? Um, contrast paint, um, silicone gray, gray. Silicon gray yeah, yeah. yeah. So that over the top of, um, as sort of an undercoat, and mm. then just sort of drag brushing a sort of aluminium yeah. or a, a stainless steel color over the top of that works really that, well. If you, yeah, this that because I did a video ages ago, and for some reason, it's, it's not, I think I, I can't remember why, I think I was just really bored one day, and, and I did that video, so I really didn't put any effort into it. And it's one of the ones I still get comments on, uh, quite a lot, and that was just changing the undercoats and then putting a the contrast mm. over them. So, if you use a really bright undercoat, so I use for late, so if I want to show sort of more expensive armor, um, like the Italian stuff, and for the Wars of Roses, I'll use an undercoat of aluminium, and then I'll put Space Wolves Gray over it because it just gives it a bit more of a blue. Blue tinge, tinge. So, yeah. You know, like yeah. yeah, not not too much, but then yeah, if you want to go for that, you know, it's the difference, the don't you? Gray, yeah, if you if I line them all up next to each other, you can then see. You see it. And then the standard armor, I just tend to use, uh, I don't know, just whatever silver I can get, and then I put strong tone on it. <coughs> I do quite armor. like fiddling around with different sort of combinations for armor, particularly for medieval, mm. like War of the Roses type thing, when they're in full plate and things. You can you or you can. Just have, like you say, Martin, have that little difference in the undercoat yeah. will make quite a big difference on the effect of the thing. Or or just use a bit of sort of a goldy colour to give Absolutely. it a goldy sheen. And, oh, um, a gore grunt of fur mm. over a, a darker metallic base, uh, silver, um, will give you a nice sort of bronzed um, bronzed effect. That's that's always quite cool. So you can get that, yeah, that effect. That's quite cool. I like doing that. Um, but I don't God, like doing it all the time. I just like having the odd guy in there. That well, exactly. But it just breaks up that monotony. You know, people talk about the monotony of doing nights. And, yeah. uh, and, and But that right. just breaks it up because you just do, like, every fifth man do something, you know, put him in dark armor or more goldy colored armor or something, just to just as much as anything else keep you interested. <clears throat> it's an interesting one from, from James. Um, Vaffan SS camouflage, a rabbit hole, and a curse. Listen, mate, we've all seen your 15 mil camouflage and it was beyond mm -hmm. beyond incredible. Yeah. It was really, really quite, quite. quite yeah, it was just yes. But no, I can understand why. Um there's there's video after video and book after book and reference material about um P dot and um autumn leaf. It's yeah, I can is that I've a only... topic even more button countery than Napoleonic button countery? Well, Is... I I I would say because I paint less World War Two than you guys. I probably and I, I when I I thought Napoleonic's bad, and then I went into that World War Two forum about tankers and asked a question about tankers uniform, and it, it, the vitriol I got was it. I in my I thought the World War Two stuff was worse. I really did. <laughs> I just you see so many comments about particularly German late war camo. Yeah, it's just like, and everyone gets really excited and angry about it, and it's like, or German oh, uniform colours. Sake, feel yeah. grey, Steve. What colour is it? <laughs> Sun bleached, probably. It's literally. I mean, I've I've said this loads of times. If people left comments on my videos, I've said just use just used a green. Because yeah. by the end of you know, say 44, 45, they were they were they were using uniforms that were three, four years old. They were stealing uniforms. They were finding clothes wherever they could. It was just just a complete mishmash. Um, so yeah, knock yourself out. Just you know, 
and if like me you get um called up for it on certain certain uh, groups uh, just ignore them <laughs> they, they know <laughs> not what they're talking about they so, uh, know I, had a, I had a conversation on one of my videos about um about yellows and the shade of yellow that would have been in, in medieval um, so I, I shared a picture of various reconstructed dyed medieval wolves. <laughs> the thing, right? I was having a conversation with my mate about this the other day and about how people get no really uppity about whether the Napoleonic uniforms were accurate. And it's like, how much, how much actual contemporary evidence is left? Well, I mean, there is a bit, but even so, I mean, what you know, they, they were produced in. It wasn't like they were mass produced in a no. in a in a sweatshop in China where they all came out with the same consistent color. You know, they were produced in multiple little factories, oh, if you want to call them that, and they yeah, well, every one would be different. And once <laughs> once you've you've spent you know three or four months in a field being yeah. shot at, it's going to be a different color. Of course it is. So my, my trousers certainly would be anyway. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, true. Well, I, I must admit, when I when I was at that museum in um, Lisbon, and they had some um, um, kakador uniforms there, mm -hmm. and I thought they're really a lot paler than I thought they'd be, because in you know you see images of them, they're really quite a dark brown, and they were very pale. But that's probably just the sun did that, right? And it's probably they're however many years old, for however many hundred years old mm -hmm. those uniforms. So, you know, but what color is real? Whatever. Do whatever you like. Yeah. I think with purple right. spots. So I think with that, it's time to go on to the next part. Because what 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 when I put it on the Facebook group, I was surprised at how many people said they hated basing. They they hate they hate the process of basing. They don't they don't like it. Do you um do you want to give should we do the should we do the news and then give the guy oh, yeah. people yep. to put some basing stuff in there and then and just and then they can and then people can put their moans. <laughs> Yes. So, so while, while we do some news, chaps, get your your gripes or your basing is awesome comments into the chat, and we'll talk about those in a bit. <laughs> your base. Has anyone awesome got too. anyone got any news? It's a there few was things. A few things. So I picked yeah. up these Arnhem. No. Oh, did you get them too? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Emperor, yeah. I only got about two things, so you can have the rest. Um, these are a new range of Arnhem uh, figures coming out from Empress. And I believe mm -hmm. they're doing, they said they're doing a Kickstarter in February are they? to launch these. Okay. Oh, okay, they, they are nice. They Ooh. look good. And of course, they'll be metal, so that'll be perfect. I know, but still. Oh, lovely. Really nice. Moist, I might have moist. to do. Might have to do my first British Army, cracky. Um, <laughs> and just today, this went live. Uh, yeah, I was. Well, I got. Yeah, I would, I've been looking at that. Um, I, I really because I we said it before. I could really see this for shakos and bayonets. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, so they I, hit their you, goal in an hour. <laughs> yeah. Have you got any other pictures, or have you just got that one? No, I, I just did that. So you want to show the I, rest? I, I, some, some of the Bavarians. Um, so Robin, who's doing his Bavarians, I'm sure it's not sure. Um, and the and skirmish line is fantastic. And for those of you who are want to do epic in that, he has done he scaled them down and he's shown them in strips. If you scale them down, he's going to put instructions giving you the right scale size and all of that. And then you there you go, you've got them next to Ooh. Warlord Games ones. There you go. Um, I hate to say it, but they actually look better. The foot, those 14 mil ones. The, mu the muskets not being identical and in identical places. Oh, look the, oh, they look they look amazing. My, I, I was I was talking to Stu Mac about this earlier actually, and um, my my concern is, is the bayonets, which you can barely see. It's like how brittle are those going to be? Though I don't know. Yeah, I um, think, but I, I think it's good. Depends on the time. It depends on the resin you use. Yeah, but, if, but for those people who've um, who's done that, I think that's really cool that he's he's put I them on strips because obviously yeah. the twenty eight the twenty eight mil ones aren't going to be on strips. So the fact he's done that, I think, is, is pretty cool. And he's going to, mm. I, I believe, there's instructions in there'll be a PDF instruction got, um, for scaling it properly with it. How much? So, is, how much um, is the Kickstarter then? Uh, so the each of the, so it's Bavarians, Austrians, and the Tyrolians, and each of the ranges are fifty euros on their own, which isn't for the STLs, which isn't bad. <laughs> that's like what. 43 44 quid yep for a whole range um and then if you want all of them together it's 110 
um and then there's the metal i didn't look at the, the the metal part of it dom did you see how much the metal i, I deliberately didn't because i don't want uh, to buy any <laughs> yeah so um but yes there's the option of obviously of getting them in in metal as as well uh, did you have any more dom or was that no, that's all the rest um, is your... well for those who want like their 15 mil maybe their flames were and those who like their 15 mil DAC, uh kurasan miniatures are now doing Ooh. some oh they look very nice don't they um and these look really cool now i, I can't remember if these are out yet or if they're up for pre-order of this but i have given them all this these stuff in the deck and you know you can get those cool flames of war starter sets for whatever oh game you're going to play but, but 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 there you go but there's a are whole they i presume they're plastic are they uh no i think they're metal i think they're metal Ooh, i might have to get some of those they're um i think they are kurasan's other ones are metal i think um, they, 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 don't, they don't quote me on that if anyone knows the, if anyone knows in the chat then um then just uh just let us know um but um and um da, 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 and then peter pig have really uh put together some carolingians look oh wow Little 15 mil these are 15 mil they're nice um and so it's the first you know peter pig do make night they're, they're kind of the go-to aren't they really mm -hmm. if yeah. peter pig hasn't got it it's something weird going on um so they've got some carolingians if you want some of that sort of ninth tenth century uh nice. action um so i thought those were really really cool I like uh, for those pose of that guy with his sword coming around the shield, that's pretty good at that scale. Really yeah. good. And lots of nice details, isn't it? And I like the fact that they've actually done it. He's done a little bit of a shield design on there to give you a guide mm. for painting the mm. design on a 50 for painting the design on a 15 mil shield, which someone said earlier. <laughs> um, we've we've also got um, Xenos Rampant has now dropped. Um, yeah, I, for those people I, is... who. I've seen this quite. It's been all over different Facebook groups and all over YouTube as well. Yeah. Is anyone so, gonna Is anyone gonna jump in and partake? Oh yeah. I would I be am. more. No, of course I'm not. I I would be, if I would be more tempted to do um, a sci-fi thing for that and multi and than anything else, and then and then do do what you've done, Steve, with little multi bases. Of yeah. alien, of, of, of funky looking aliens, maybe Ooh, using the Stargrave, yeah. using the Stargrave kits and. You know stuff like that. Make it make it super weird. Um, if I was going to do it, what's the point? If I'm going to do it, I'm going to make. I'm going to be doing like like. Is it mass eight, battle? Eight, 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 eight. Was it skirmish? No, it's I like it's, it's just like it's just like lying rampant. It's just oh, is it? oh, okay. It's just oh, it's right. the same. It's the same thing. Just same speaking. system. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, so Dom, I know you're going to like these, and Steve, these are metal, right? But. <laughs> Uh, Gringo Forties has shown off new, some of their new Vietnam. Um, I can't remember what you call these guys now, but um, they're they're just lovely. So Ooh, you got this oh, one. Awesome. Um, then uh, Trooper advancing. Guy, this guy over Thompson. Um, I can't remember who, who these guys are now. And then oh, this was my favorite. This was my that favorite. Look, that, that looks like Willem Dafoe in Platoon. It does. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> does. Right. Absolutely how about this? Does. Uh, uh, how about this guy then and his dog? He's got an dog. MP40. Uh, but have you seen what you seen what he's carrying? He's got an MP40. Oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, I mean, they, I mean, Gringo Toys miniatures are, are lovely. Um, I can't are they remember. Australian SAS or something? Uh, I think they're, they're, there's some kind of special forces with no the slouch oh, hats. They, they are hang on. The, the, the mad weapons, but that um, they are lovely. They are really, really nice. Really nice. I don't know how well they'd scale in <clears> with you'd, you'd have to get some and then scale them in with the um, uh, the, 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 the Rubicon ones. Yeah, the uh, Rubicon, they yeah. are they're the Mac V SOG. Um, so oh, military assistance command, Vietnam studies and observation group. <laughs> Oh my god, there's more on the website. Why have I gone on here? Don't go on the website. <laughs> oh, there's one with there's one with an M79 firing an M79. Oh, oh nice. Oh my god. What? <laughs> what? There's one charging firing with an M60. <laughs> oh, oh Steve. Steve, Steve, Steve. You need to uh, and we have to stay off that. I, I won't be going on yeah. it. Actually, anyway, I'll probably uh, really get on it. I know there's a bloody miniatures. He's announced the the, uh, the new wave, isn't there? Um, mm -hmm. As well. So, yeah, quite quite a few things. I've got a bit of news. In two days' time, Turnip Twenty Eight hits Kickstarter. But hey, yeah. oh really? Yeah. 
What are they going to kickstart? Is that the figures? Yeah, they're actually doing um, infantry. So, they, But they're going to be available as both. I think I only briefly saw it before I came uh, on tonight. It was on Twitter. And Max Fitzgerald put there. I think they're available as digital. So ST, you can download and no, obtain the STL. But they're going to be doing physical copies as well, which I oh, didn't think cool. they were going to do. So... I don't know. I always said I wouldn't. I wouldn't get involved because I, I like making my own. But having seen some of the sort of the the, um, the concept ones on uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram, ugh, quite tempted. Quite tempted. <laughs> it's hitting the mainstream. It's hitting Kickstarter. Dom, you're backing it. Is oh yeah. Um, <laughs> he's not going to send you some review copies, given that you're the biggest advocate of. Uh... <laughs> Turn it. No, I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm small fry compared to to, um, to some some people. So um... they're they're US. They were US. They're, oh, are they? All uh, oh, right. Special. Sorry, they're a special operations unit which conducted covert unconventional warfare with MP4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently, so just in over dog when you went on the website, the dog is it says something like radio operator and his dog Rhino. <laughs> Rhino, just called a dog Rhino. Why not? Uh, Maybe it's a reference to a film or something that I haven't seen. Probably. Quite, yeah, quite, quite possibly. Um, so you're gonna do? You're gonna get into that? Are you still the alternative? I don't know. I'm gonna think about it because I've never backed anything on Kickstarter, but I, I love Turn Twenty Eight. So. <laughs> you're <laughs> quite a Um, I mean, so I'm, a, I'm a, a, a Patreon of the the game, so. Um, I love, get in I love touch sit with him and see if you can um, see if mm. you can do some um, That's what I stuff. Well, occasionally, occasionally he does he does comment on my um, post on Twitter, um, so I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm not I'm not one for free stuff anyway. So. You are King Turner. I don't mean free, but you could you could definitely drive some traffic to into his Kickstarter. Well, I think that, to be fair, I think I honestly think it's going to be really popular, and I think it'll be funded. I, I, I think it'll be overly funded. That's how how popular I think it's going to be. Because it's turned it. Yes. <laughs> first. Right on to a bit on to a bit of basing then, because I didn't realise how much of a divisive subject basing was. Like some people absolutely despise it. Um, and yeah, I'm, with you. I'm with you. I I love yeah, it. Man. Yeah. If there's oh, one yeah, bit I actually awesome. don't dis I don't dislike that much, it's basing. I think that's great fun. Ken, do you like basing? I love it, mate. I do. I've, I've started to like it more than. I used to. I used to find it like a monotonous task, but now I'd like to try and make it all individual and make make exactly something going on with it. Yeah, and it, I think for me it's because my my mate right, he he is the complete opposite. He it, his vitriol towards basing is is legendary. His, his basing is glue, flock, and we're done. That's it. <laughs> um, and he, he doesn't. He, he hates it. He, he absolutely despises basing. Um, but I, I love it. I mean, I've got an entire shelf on, in mm -hmm. my thing over there just of basing material. Yeah, I've got a, the, the, the thing next to me is is just... Hang on. Let me just want to come out. Please don't knock all my shit over. This. Look, that's yep. all tufts. Oh, no. <laughs> and, and oh, they the Tammy, the Tammy are one tufts. Yeah, I've there's got... Some, yeah, there's about 10 of them. And... I've got boxes of tufts, grit, basalt, um... Off cuss, cuss. Of cork, cuss, cuss. <laughs> cuss, cuss. yeah, don't forget the cuss, cuss. <laughs> kitty oh, litter. No. Um, that, um, is it, is it called Koya? The stuff you got on from coconuts. I've got a load of that yep. as well. Um, anything yep. that I find that I think will be useful ends up on the shelf of useful basing things. Yeah, Let's see what I've other people are saying. <clears throat> Snow, <laughs> desert, mud, concrete. Give me a, give me a, I can, I can do snow in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like breaking bad <clears throat> who doesn't love picking super glue hard and clump foliage from under their oh, nails don't. oh fuck off <laughs> Just in your thumb, it? it's like you're it off it's horrible see this is one bit i've i've never got it's from richard right so richard rich is a commission painter because he's a bloody awesome painter and so he paints these awesome lovely figures but the customer wants to base them themselves mm. You want to match them into their army, maybe. I know, but couldn't you just give the commission painter a brief of what you want them to look like and get them to do it? I mean, if they've got the skill, I mean, not saying they haven't got the skills, but I'd put more trust in the commission painter with the basing. 
Yeah, it does make you want. Wa- it must make people like Richard wonder what the heck they're doing with their beautiful figures they painted. We, 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 <laughs> we've got a man down. Oh, 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 good. <laughs> the fiddle yard's obviously collapsed on him. Um, no, but now, our, now our brand is is our branding thing looks all weird. <laughs> Oh, I just look a bit strange. <laughs> I'll get rid of it. It's all right. I'll lose it. I'll lose it. Hang yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Ah, there we go. No, no, you watch it. will be back. It'll be, it'll, be, it'll be back in a minute. Oh, no. wait. You're not me. No, wait. No, I'm you. There there we go. Go. <laughs> yeah, no. <clears throat> I never understood that. With, with I see a lot of commission painters, and yeah, the they're, 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 they're figures that be painted on plain bases. Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, it's an odd, odd thing, isn't it? Uh, the police have arrived on a raid. Yeah, I think you're right, Gary. <laughs> That's it, yeah. I saw that talk about his loft. <laughs> They've just come through the front door. Oh, that would be... Uh, okay, that would be quite funny. Is a... <laughs> yeah, it's another one. It's to come back, isn't it? So From old school. Basing, little bitty dioramas. Absolutely. I, oh, yeah. definitely, I definitely agree with that. Especially yeah. for, for me with bolt actions or team weapons, like, um, you know, anti-tank guns, mortars, medium machine guns, Um I, I again, they're a treat. That I, I love them. Kit bashing the crew, bit bit of a, a funky base. Oh, happy time yeah. on my desk. So I don't even go anywhere near as much as you do. You guys do on on the basing, um, but I still really enjoy it. I don't mind basing at all. It just doesn't. It's it's, it's the end of the end of uh, the unit, right? It's when it it's finished. Yeah, I, I, the basing. It's like that's I, it done. Done. I've gotten to the point where I like basing so much. And this is why I, about the thing with to do with the feet is I I like creating the base for the model to go on, not creating the base around the model. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I wanted so like like with Warwick, like now Warwick was a pain in the ass because I couldn't remove them from there, but because they were all so fiddly, I like I think I'd have done more damage to the model because there are some models that you can't remove from the integral bases because it, it it will break the model. The ankle mm-hmm. isn't thick enough, you know, um, it, and you're just you're just bugging the thing up. But like these gripping beasts, what um, gripping beasts, fire forge ones are quite robust. Um, so I like so what I'm going to do with with these, I will create the entire base. It will have tufts and everything on it, and then I'll stick them onto it. But I, I used to think oh, that will take a long time. But since I started using the the um, bit of a product plug here, the AK, especially the AK ones, they they're drying for about forty minutes. So I put them on, and I still work while they're still wet. Where while mm-hmm. they're nearly dry, mm-hmm. I then push the feet into a little blob, of, little blob of super glue, admittedly on the on the bottom of each foot, and I push them into it, and then you get that naturally formed uh, yeah, yeah. divot ar- around their foot. Um, if you've seen the, the the videos I do, I like you know you can easily put things like hoof prints and and other things in there. It's the same with the snow, the snow yeah. stuff. Not not the the I've you started using the AK not one. The far, no, I actually got to say it's far. Um, I find the AK stuff much more user friendly, and I would actually say a superior product to that other stuff. Uh, because it, it does it doesn't yellow and I um but now I just need a snowy something a snowy to, to, to do. Um <laughs> but um but yeah I I like to I like to think of every it is the base and it it doesn't take that long and with, with the ranges of tufts that are now available. Oh god yes it, you know <clears throat> and you, it can, again I I love using cork. Um when I put when I want to put that um, the, the the DAC video and the SAS one I've had loads of people saying how, how do you make your bases how do you use a cork for that so I'm doing a video about that but Awesome. Again, a re- really simple base material, um, and like, like Martin said, the amount of accessories available now um, to put on bases—it's mm. it, it's phenomenal. I mean, that Martin, remember those ones you were using a couple of months back? Which um, ones, sorry? They were like, oh, um, oh, what were they? You sent me, a, you put them on your some of your Star Wars Legion bases, it's like individual. Oh, sort of, yes, oh, these the, things. The um, yes, yeah, the leaves, the leaves, yes, these things. These things. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, a bit, were, they're a bit of a they're a bit of a treat. Mm-hmm. Like this, that's six pound fifty, and you only get one sheet in there. But you're not mm. going to put it on every mm. every base, you know. You, they're, they're here and there, you know. I, like, I love it that the picture on the back they've got like a whole forest floor of it, but that that's probably like a hundred <laughs> quid right there. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. If you bought a couple of packs and mix them in, yeah, I did them on the Star Wars stuff, and yeah, yeah they're great for they're they're great fun. I really really like them. I really rate rate them. I think they're. Really I fun. saw them. I could. I just. I, I had no. I couldn't think of anywhere. At that time, where I could use them, but I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking of getting some. I don't uh, they got the three? Did you get yours through Great Escape? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it'll be, it'll be here like in next day or in two days' time. <laughs> um, and and I got them for Great Escape. Uh, I got that one when I went to their store on uh, uh, um, 
where the hell did we go? Warfare. Warfare. Um, I, I went and got them there because uh, it's brilliant service. So yeah, they. Um, no. I think it's um, it's re- just. I just I don't know. I just like to every now and then just pop pop one sticking out because it just gives it more of that three D effect. And all you got to do it, is yeah, pull them off the <laughs> pull them off the um, paper, <laughs> um, sort of bend them out a little bit. A uh, blob of super glue or whatever, and just push them in. I like putting a tuft on the base first, and then pushing them into a tuft yeah. because then there's something for it to adhere to. Um, and then I the think, tufts. I mean, yeah, they. You don't. I just the think they look. They, they really did add something to the base, and they're just yeah, really good. Yeah. Where's um, the um? Where's those bloody? So I, I don't know. I mean, I think most people do know about T- Tajima One. Um, oh, but great. if anyone if anyone doesn't, so that one's going to be empty. Um, but they do. Obviously, you've got the, the, the normal ranges of tufts that you would um, mm-hmm. <coughs> you'd expect, like wild grass and and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but they do some quite nice sort of diorama ones that you can you can stick on there, like these ones. Now, hopefully, these will come out. Do you mind if I just, I'll just make this mm. a little bit bigger for a second? All yeah, right. So, um, ah. Uh-huh. Hang on one second. Let me get rid of that. So for the desert basing, I picked up these ones. So you can get these really nice. Yeah, they're lovely. I've got some of those. You've got rock in them. Yeah. Cork. Yay! (laughs) They become pre cork But they even do snow drifts. If you if you what if you are doing your snow bases with and uh, rubble as well, like little sort of um, just so you can adhere those onto the bases. So I I do really recommend. Oh shit! These guys. That just flew out. Um, I really, I really do. I've got about ten different packs from them. Um, and they've, they've got an awful. I think they even do bockage, don't they? You could like, yeah, they do. Like, like, yeah, they do. Bockage down. They're, um, they're, they are amazing. They're, they're some of the best quality ones I think you get. I mean, they're, they're a little bit more expensive than some, you know, like those, unlike those yeah. big boxes you get on Amazon with <laughs> fifty million tufts <laughs> for about ten or about ten quid or something. But the Tajima <clears throat> ones are more expensive, but they're they're really they've, good. They've usually got an offer on now, which is if yeah. you get uh, get three yeah. or four, you get a box free. Yeah, um, of yeah. Their right. standard tufts as well. Um, but yeah, they're they're very cool and they're very quick. Like, as, well. as you say, I like the, the the big. They do those really big tufts. So if you're doing a big base, you can fill yeah. half the base with one of them. It's great. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, really good. It's interesting coming from Corey. He loves basing and find himself spending more and more time. And I, to be fair, Corey, your basing is yeah. fantastic. <laughs> I can understand exactly understand why. But um, <clears throat> no, it's it's. It's building around. So uh, actually, uh, Alex has um, has chimed in. Also, every tank on a base only monsters wouldn't. <laughs> Absolutely, Alex. Definitely. I find it difficult to agree with your argument there, Alex. What you some say, would. Ken? Oh no, he's not here. Good. He's not here. Some would. Um, some I'll would. just text him. Has Southampton just been washed away in the sea or something? Big tidal wave has come over. So Don's put he likes basing, but he's usually doing large projects under a strict time crunch. We need the basing to be simple and to be able to I can yeah, I can totally get yeah. that. I mean sometimes yeah. I can I can spend an afternoon just basing things because I, I just love basing. It's I find it really therapeutic. I don't know I know a couple of people have said that, but I I love it. But I'm if I was under if I was painting for a tournament I was up against it, yeah, I think I'd I think I'd probably try and find a, a simpler scheme. The thing is, I think there are such good products out there now that actually you can do really simple basing and very effective basing. Oh, yeah. And then you could also spend an awful lot of time on them and, and mm. make them even better. But, you know, I do the same. I'll, some majority of mine have really did simple. We use some of that geek villain stuff. Um, yeah. So geek villain, geek gaming, whatever they are. Um, that ready basing, which is just fantastic. With a few tufts, it works perfectly well and you don't have to do a huge amount of prep. And then other times the Vallejo muddy stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, which is just, <laughs> again, brilliant. <laughs> have you seen his message? B- no, B- his... BT have let, have let him down. He's, he's not happy. My net, <laughs> my net, <laughs> I quote, my net has just died. Beep, BT. Beep, beep, <laughs> BT. Yeah. Oh, well. I don't. Do we know about thanks, uh, BT. Vallejo much? Yeah. When I go through these, I use them as paint hold, uh, figure holders when I'm painting. No. I, yeah. I I I don't know how many of the of these empty ones I've got. They are absolutely <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I literally don't know. And how you buy the big them. one. I buy the big ones because I can't no, just go through them buy, too quickly. I, 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 I normally buy two of the small ones. Uh, um, it, it, it does last. Too what? These are like the tardest. These things. 
Mm. You, you don't realise how much is actually inside until you start I get using a, it. I get a sense of disappointment great. when I get to the bottom of one of those big ones because they seem to be lasting forever. And then you sort of <laughs> suddenly go, what? There's nothing. It's like even when you can't get the last bit of Marmite out of the Marmite jar. There's mm. just nothing. It's like, uh, what? It's run out. What? Can't be. This is a good point from Paul. He used the basin to help tell the, tell, tell the story, the figures. I, I, I absolutely yeah. get that. Yeah. It's a really, Absolutely. A really, a really That's good why I refer you back to the the base that I painted to upset Dom before I even came on the uh, the podcast, where I had the uh, the sort of bulwark that had been all overrun by by the French <laughs> and that British soldier was getting bayoneted, and there was a shit, you know, there was a, a crater off to one corner, so like you know, like it had just been shelled, and the cavalry and the infantry just swarmed over it. Um, I love to do that. That's why I like using those big. That upset me up until the point I realised how terrible your dicing is. So actually, I'm quite. It doesn't bother me. Anymore. Did you watch? Did not 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 to spoil not to spoil it for anyone. I but did. Did you, did you watch my battle report? <laughs> I you know, did. Did you see how what you could? Well, I don't know if you could see, but did you see how? Uh, you imagine how how smug he was. Um, I can. I can. That. I could. See, I could feel it oozing through the screen. It was I know. Quite brilliant. I know. But... <laughs> Ah, if, if um, that, also, when, when, uh, yeah, when people say how how you know why do I base tanks? And I, I I say the same thing all the time. It for me the vehicles tie the army together when, when they're based. Yeah, yeah. And uh, mm. I know people said oh, but it won't look the same. I said well, I'm able to suspend my um, disbelief for twenty seconds while that based tank is on a road. It doesn't it doesn't bother me? Um, and I, do, no. I just think it, it does it does tie a project together. It's, yeah, I, I think that also that, that tying of a base of a, no, sorry, using the same kind of base approach mm -hmm. with an army or a, or a formation is so important to me as well, I have to say, even though I, I'll get figures from all over the place and some are pre-painted and some are bought in from yeah. elsewhere, I do like the fact, the frustration I have, and I'm going to go back and rebase the whole of my Napoleonics for this very reason, is I look at some and think, oh, they're all different basing. You know, yeah. I don't mind the Prussians being based differently to the Russians or the Russians to the you know French or whatever. You, but I want all the Prussians to look the same, basic. Yeah, I want all the and I, yeah. So I'm gonna have to go yeah. back and do all them. I, I, I felt I felt left out of the um the the based vehicles. The only base vehicle I've got is the really really big Star Wars tank. That's the only <laughs> that's the only, the, only, the only base vehicle I've got. But it is on a base. It is on a base. Um, I know mm -hmm. that's part of the game, and I think it has to be, but. There you go. I felt left out because I haven't painted a. Oh no, I've got my Flames of War ones. I just haven't decided what to do with them yet. I'm, I'm in. A, I'm sort of undecided whether to. I probably will base them. I just haven't bought the bases and and done anything yet with them. Mm. Yeah, matching of the color to the the rims. Yeah, yeah. I tend to use because I mean with with my dark ones, I'm using uh, English uniform um, around around the base. Uh, and for all the other ones, I just use US olive drab, like a, a nice green. And I think that it contrasts well with the actual colours you've got on the base. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it doesn't. I mean, I, I couldn't. I know some people go for like all black around the base, like a, um, a, a black. You sh I used to do that on 40k when I, I was big into my second edition 40k. All my basing. It was, it was the early 90s. Everything was there. Uh, I think someone mentioned it earlier. Goblin Green and Flock. Yes, yeah. the 90s classic I, 40k. I, use, I, use, I didn't even use uh, glue. I, I set the Flock on the paint and let the paint hold it. <laughs> it, it was, was it that like um, stuff made from like chips of wood, like really oh, fine? Oh, yeah, wood? yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, and it just it just didn't it just did did not adhere at all. And then by the no. end, by the time you finished the game, it was on the mat or carpet. Oh, be, be everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Someone had closed the door, and <laughs> half your bases would be uh, would be stripped <laughs> of, of a flock with the uh, the slight gust that was going through. I said, oh, what else have we got here as well? Do, 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 do. I um I because for my multi basing, I mm -hmm. tend to paint paint because I use the same um. Uh, decor. I bought a I bought basically a five or ten liter. I can't remember brown paint, which is in the shed, and I oh, refill yeah. my I refill my little um, salsa tub every oh, now yeah. and then with it. Um, so I and that is what I use for undercoating all of my bases. They're all all the rims are this kind of not quite chocolate brown, mm. and then so for the multi bases I do that. But for some weird reason, when it comes to skirmish basing, I I, I, I do I do black rims. Oh, I right. think it's because in skirmish skirmish games, 
well, well, not even necessarily in skirmish games, but it, it, in games where you have a lower figure count or you have nicer, I say, or more co complex sculpts, I almost feel like they are display pieces. And for some reason in my head, when I used to do display models, I'd always do the plinths black. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's the same. And when I used to play D, well, I still do play D and D. We we always did the bases black because there were so many different locations that these people would find themselves in. Yeah. So, you know, we'd always do them black, though I most of the time was in the dungeon. Um, so, um, so yeah. But I tend to now, even on like like the Crusaders, you know, you've got Sam. But I find that this brown is quite neutral and it goes with lots of things. <laughs> I like I say I was just. I know people, some people don't like bass, and I think, you know, but I was surprised the amount of people that just didn't like yeah. it. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe, you know, we, we, we all take different things from the hobby as it is. Mm. Um, but that's what's so great yeah. about it is that you yeah. know, everyone gets, you know, uh, you know, everyone, everyone can take that. It is what I think is good is when you have something like this that pulls those resources and you can say to someone, have you tried this basing paste that'll make your life easier? And do, and do exactly what you need to, yeah. or these tufts, or this pro, this painting process, um, like they try these metallics. Well, this um, this stuff here, uh, the Vallejo Earth texture, mm -hmm. that is what, one of the best things yeah. I've ever bought because it smells nice, which is the main thing. <laughs> don't, 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 don't go around huffing. What does it taste? <clears throat> it tastes really good. Um, I haven't. I've not made that mistake yet, but. You can color it. You can mix it with paints. You can it, it dries quickly. You can you can more because it's so it's so viscous. You can sculpt with it sometimes. Yeah. Um, excuse me. I just need to put something out. <laughs> it, it's just reminding me of that. Um, we've we've just had the hot girls are here message. Oh. <laughs> Oh well, you're going to tell that hot story. Girls are here. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that no, they're not. You're going to die alone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this this stuff is brilliant for I me mean, for desert basin. You can't grow on with it, but you can add you can add washes to it. You can add acrylic paint to it. Mm. It, it, mm. it sculpts well. You can press things into it. You, oh, it's just fantastic. I'm um I'm using for the Zulus. I'm using the same basing uh, paste that I use for my Crusaders, but I'm adding a bit of uh, red pigment into it because mm -hmm. purely because of watching Zulu. Um, and I'm I, I, I'm hoping that this is <laughs> that this is right. And I've seen some some videos from um, Zulu land, South Africa, but the, the the sand has got this much redder yeah. texture to it. So all I do, I just just pop a little little tiny little pinch of um, pigment into it and just mix them in. They're really good. Um, how many Zulus are you doing? Well, as he's not here, I <laughs> have done about 50 so far. <laughs> I'll be honest, having watched it again on Friday, it just gets the juices flowing when it comes to modeling. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I literally have, I have to, every time I watch it, I have to stop myself the next day from, from buying some because. Do you I, want I some? Think, no, I've got a package for you here anyway. I could all no, I've got to do. Look, in fact, look. If I pick up your the parcel that I'm sending you, on top of it, these this is these are sprues of Zulus that I was cutting up earlier. Do you want me to just? Oh no, no, just just pop, in pop one or two in there. Oh, you know he wants to. <laughs> oh, um, that's what I need to say, um, Simon. Thank you. Um, the parcel finally <laughs> arrived. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it only took two months. To, to travel oh, from Farnborough to Cheshire. Um, but, yes, yeah, if, if Sam is watching this, thank you so much. That, that's got that's kept me in bits and pieces for the next 40 million years. Um, <laughs> and I've, I've got a nice Rubicon um, King Tiger to, to work on as well. So, awesome stuff, mate. Really appreciate it. Um, there we go. Decorator's Cork. Yeah. Oh. Again, I think, I think there's, so, there's so many... I mean... Um, mixed. I use mixed herbs for my jungle basin, and it's the it's the the best yeah. um, like jungle material for jungle it scrub. Um, and it, it's just it's just dead easy. Just glue it to the base, and we're done. I um whenever I'm on whenever I'm on site, um, I because I spend a lot of time looking at the ground. Um, it's good because obviously my clients think I'm looking for archaeology, but really I'm just looking. It's like, what can I take back with me in a bag? Um, <laughs> you'll sit out. So the other day I picked up loads of moss on her, so I brings back sword from battlefields he's visiting, uses it on his <laughs> figure's base. Ultimate realism. <laughs> yes. I could, I could well imagine that. That'd be kind of good, actually. Uh, yeah. 
and the bases smell lovely. They, the, the smell doesn't last very long. Uh, what has been glued down is an big exposed to the open air. And that's how my girlfriend was like, um, where's the mixed herbs? And I was like, what are you going to actually use them for cooking with? <laughs> <laughs> why, why, does, why does my army smell like a roast chicken? <laughs> uh, right, I think I think it's time to... I mean, thanks for that. Ooh. That was really interesting. Dom, yeah. Dom needs to shout the... Um... The crack pots. Again. Oh yes. Oh yes. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. Hang on. Uh, let me. Uh, yeah. So um, reminder that the um, crack pot quiz is running. So you have another week or so. I think it's another week to do it. Um, the link is in the Facebook page, and if I can find it, I'll stick it in the chat here. So um, if you want to enter it, I've, we've had quite a lot of entries already. I think it was uh, we're in 86 entries to thank Ooh, you everybody who's already entered. And this I have I did have a peak yesterday. Oh, oh. I, oh but I'm you're not gonna, Tom's not gonna be here. I'm He's not gonna be here when they're announced. So oh, um, right. okay. no All no right. I, I'm nice. out that so, week. So but yeah there's some really interesting uh, results so far in there but it's some of the categories are incredibly tight. <laughs> um so uh, <laughs> it's yeah, uh, is it are we, is it going to cause arguments? Is there going to be? Oh argument? yeah, definitely, it's going to cause arguments. Good. Absolutely. Channel, but we have also be... got our own personal little ones in there as well. We have our own our, our own one, which will be uh, yes afterwards. So yeah, I'll put the description. Uh, I'll put the link in the description, and uh, please have a vote if you haven't already done so. And I know somebody said it's like trying to choose your your favourite children. It's not that difficult, is it? You know, you know your no. favourite children. No, it's easy. You everybody do. absolutely. Knows their children. It's That's not that difficult. difficult. Awesome Not name, Lance Connect fifteen twenty five. Hello from Arizona. Welcome, hello, hello. Dude. welcome, welcome, welcome. Right, on to some viewers' pictures, and this week... <laughs> <laughs> you can match the herbs to the army. <laughs> oh, God, that's all that <laughs> oh, that's a Bravo. quality. That is a oh, quality. God. Hang on, we'll have to give him that one for that. Yay! That's that? awesome. I think I'll. Um, I think I might try that. Right, let's look at some nice. <laughs> let's look at some nice, pretty. Um, what we what we're talking about? Viewers, pictures. Okay, so as always, been through, grabbed a handful of them. Can't grab all of them. I wish I could because there's just been so much awesomeness out there over the past seven days. Um, so thanks for everyone to, for, who does post. Keep posting. It's <clears throat> it's just an absolute joy every day to see what you guys have been painting. I I just enjoy it so so much. First up, we have Andy. These are just, oh, I mean, ah, oh, no. every week he does stuff in you. Oh, Finnish cavalry. They lovely. They're Very just, nice. just Andy. Just yes. <laughs> just stop it, Andy. They are so so nice. Lovely work. I, I did. I did remember the actual name. It begins with a K. A K it begins with a K, but I can't remember. So Andy, if you're in the chat, let us know because I forgot. Um, but they're just the paint, the painting, the basin, everything about them. And every face is a character as well. That's what I love about them. They're just so so good. Beautiful. Work. Oh, lovely stuff. Uh, up next, it's the Napoleonic machine, Anthony. He's back with some more. Is he? What more? Twelfth <sighs> Dutch line infantry. <laughs> Unbelievable. Lovely. I, I don't. I, don't I do we... love a mounted figure in a unit. I do love it. I don't know how he does it. I just don't know how this, how the man does it. He's like I think he's a he's a Napoleonic painting machine. Are there any more regiments at Waterloo that he hasn't done yet? I That's don't, I don't know. know. I can't really believe there are. Jesus. Um, just just lovely stuff, and it, and, and it's, it's it's a good mix as well. It's just uh, keep keep them coming, Anthony. Um, now from there we're going to a bit of a, a bit of post medieval from Don. Some wild yeah. west. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, they're I, lovely. That's not a real period, is it? No, it doesn't. Doesn't exist. <laughs> you will upset a lot of people. Well, I say a lot. About six archaeologists, that, that, and that's it. No, they they are lovely. Have, have, has anyone noticed that there are a lot more wild west figures coming out? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I, there may even be more. Who knows? <laughs> and also, um, there's no rules, aren't there? Because the lardy ones are coming yeah. out very soon. Oh so, yeah, what a cowboy! Yeah, what a cowboy. So um, yeah, there's a there's a load of uh, it's definitely one of the new period things, isn't it? Well, it's post medieval, isn't it? So. That's exactly. 
I'm just ready. <laughs> we're, we're, we're post medieval aficionados around these parts, <sighs> aren't we? Just I have told you, there is genuinely a post medieval society. Yeah, yeah. Like, right, there, right. there is like a, there is like a, you know, a whole, well, I say again, a bunch, probably about three people that meet in London. <laughs> post medieval stuff. <laughs> Alex, Alex will back me. Alex will back me up on this. They, they, they do meet and, and and talk about things post medieval. Do they meet in the past studies. or the future? I think they just go there and probably just argue about what their name means. <laughs> yeah. Where where are we today? We're in the pub. Oh, okay, brilliant. That's sorted. <laughs> right. I know I know we have many, many, many fans of bloody miniatures on here. Yeah. And Dan mm. has been painting some and look at them. Lovely. They fantastic. are fantastic. Awesome. Just there's something about again. There's something about bloody miniatures that just they're so they're just characters. Every single figure. Oh, they are fantastic. They are absolutely fantastic. Um, I know you're doing your Pikeman's Lament in um, fifteen, aren't you? Fifteen. Otherwise, yeah. I know. I know they're metal. I just you'd have to just get some of them to put them in. No, because I when we when we were doing it in twenty eight to start off with, I, I looked at that whole bloody lot thing that they've got. Is it, is it a whole bloody? Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> got um. I think we're just doing it in 15 because it's probably going to be quicker to paint that way. Um, again, more um, Dom. This is this is going to be weird stuff to you. So, but more from Matthew and his uh, adventures through the uh, Horus Heresy with some oh, Cape of Blood this... Angels. Just look at those. Well, they do. He has painted them so well. Oh, they are God. lovely. I do like. I like the weathering. Yes, I like, I like the dusty feet. Yeah, good. I was going to say that 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 to me is perfect weathering because it looks natural. It's not, uh, but you haven't. It's not been overdone, and you can exactly. still see exactly what they're meant to be. It's which not is very cool. On. Oh, brilliant! Just yeah. Again, every time I see these, I've got to stop myself from getting into um into Horus Heresy because they look really rather nice. Um, back to Inga Civil War with some pike and shot from Mark. Absolutely fantastic, lovely, and <laughs> lovely bases. Look at the bases. Oh, a bit more commission for you there, Martin, with the bases. No, I still don't. Get that. <laughs> I, do need to, I do need to email him. <laughs> they are they are they are very very nice, very nice indeed. Okay, up next, <clears throat> going a bit back in time with Greek, uh, Greek with Nick and his Greeks. Look at these! Ah, Ooh. now that, now that, right? So that is a phalanx, right? Yeah. I like that. That is a phalanx. This is my thing. That when someone says Greek warfare to me, that's what I think. That's what mm -hmm. I think of. Yeah. Um, that's whereas my that's picture of the eight men in a saga <laughs> phalanx is not a <laughs> phalanx. Is it's, it's, it's it's for saga, so it's different. Yeah. To, but that, no, I mean, but it's that, not a phalanx, that, is it? It can't be a phalanx because that's no, a phalanx. But, I, but, I'm gonna get, but I, get, I bet there's a rule in there for phalanx, isn't there? Oh, there is, yeah. Yeah, Some, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, I really annoy you. There's even a rule they can shoot from short range. Who? Phalanx, because it's supposed to simulate the, the sarissus being stuck out. <laughs> so they shoot. <laughs> I saw that rule and I went, oh, shit. That, that's going <laughs> to that's gonna upset a lot of people. It is. Uh, love it. <laughs> so up next, yeah. a bit a bit more post medieval. Um, Paul had a, a game of um, American Civil War. I think it was Black Powder using Epic. Hey, oh look, yes, look this at was very those. Cool. I could oh, have posted. Yeah. He posted quite a few photographs, but for me, I don't know why. But this is my favourite, and I don't know why they just look oh, like that. so oh. good. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. absolutely brilliant. We've been we've been playing uh, Pickett's Charge and. In 15 mil, and I'm kind of mm. very tempted to get some more epics just to do that because mm. it's a great rule system, and <laughs> that would look really good. I love this. Look, Robin, he's talking about the pike block shooting. That makes sense, Miller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna actually I'm gonna around my house tomorrow. It's brilliant. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I, don't, I think we've just, I think we've just found the back of a crack con t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh tell it like it is, Miller. He he pulls no punches. Um up next is Paul with some Russian I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Streltsy. Oh right. oh yes. They're very old figures, oh, wow. I think he said. I think he said they're really old figures, and he stripped them and redid them. They, I just love the good, fact they're, they're using yeah, they're using their axes as a yeah. Oh, they've got, I was about to ask: is that is that 
actually based mm. on reference or is that that just looks really cool i, I don't know I enough about that, that period but it's very right very right lad, right lads we're off to war don't forget your gun and your big axe your big ass axe because you've got some chopping to do <laughs> because um there could, there could be some trouble in the very near future for somebody <laughs> um these next ones are from Robin. These are absolutely fantastic. Oh, oh, I, I, yeah, Frank he's, he's done a, ster a sterling yeah. job. He's done a, um, a sterling job of those. There is um, his Bavarian things. I, I, he's he's building up a Bavarian. Because we, I think, we, well, I know he wants to do Napoleon, but I think we're going to be doing Soldiers of Napoleon. Um, mm -hmm. where he'll be using his Bavarian. So there's a Kickstarter, obviously, with his his name on it right now. But yeah, aren't they cool? They're Vitrix figures as well. Um, they're, they're lovely. They're very guys. Nice. Again, it uh, just Dom, makes the piece like so interesting. So it cool. does as soon as he when because he, he, he put his work. Um, that's the proper thing. <laughs> Apparently, there you go. Must be like some polls did it. Cool. So it must be true. There's something hardcore about that, isn't it? What are you doing there, mate? I'm just resting my gun on my axe. Right there, you are. Right, I'll just go off this way because I don't want to get anything, anything to do with you. Um, <laughs> don't more weird stuff. Oh. But just that, look, look at the flesh. Look at the flesh on that. I just, <laughs> just what? I, was, what? I wasn't looking, and then I, I just said, "Look at that flesh on that." I know you say, "You dirty old men." No, you do you mind wearing yes, yes, yeah, well, Just look at that. I mean, big gun. That's a big gun. That's that's a very <laughs> very big gun. Uh, but no, so when he when he posted that on Saturday, I was I was just like just because he even said he doesn't normally paint in, um, Imperial Guard. But they that that is just fantastic. Just the, mm -hmm. the flesh tones on it are just oh brilliant. Can I just say Miller is still going on about that? Bike. <laughs> is he? Is he? <laughs> yes, he's still going on. I love Dom's... it that that out of everything else. <laughs> he's still going got some uh... shooting to do. <laughs> oh, uh, right, Dom, if you thought that was weird, things are about to take a trip a down we weird avenue just off strange shit boulevard <laughs> <laughs> and it's there <laughs> that's awesome what the but jesus is that <laughs> apparently, apparently these are for silver bayonet bravo Nick. wow <laughs> wow i could see someone putting coming down in christmas morning and finding that on the top of their christmas cake and go oh my god what the hell is going on I, 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 I would definitely, I would definitely have that on my Christmas cake. Yeah, I that would. is, that is, uh, that is, that is awesome. That's stupendous. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, up next, a bit of a, a bit of scenery from Tony from Mordheim. Oh, scratch built. That is scratch built. Awesome. Scratch built. Oh, scratch bloody, built. Lovely. Do you love scratch built scenery? Unbelievably That's good. Yeah. Just unlovely. It's, it's just, it just, it's just brilliant. I just as soon as he posted it, because he, he he put quite a few photographs of it up. Um, and for me, that I mean, it's for more. That just screams more time. It's just so more time esque. It's unbelievable. Brilliant stuff. And some skellies at the bottom as well. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> and because his name begins with W, he's always last. But last but not least, it's Warren. Warren, just look at that. Oh, oh well. Uh, trouser fire. A lovely Cromwell <laughs> tr trouser fire. <laughs> What's happened to this stream? What? Oh no! Oh no! I think we I'm, need a break. I'm, I'm going to need. A, I'm going to need a, a lie down, a darkened room after this. I really, yeah, that is fantastic. You would not That's think lovely. that was twenty mil, would you? You'd, you'd swear. No, that was a a, a twenty eight mil. Um, I'd say it was even bigger. I would have thought it was a, I know, mean, that could be, one of those. That, Jesus, that, that could lovely. be scale modelling. It's so good. Again, all the other photographs. I just think that one for me just shows it off. It just looks, <clears throat> and again, another iconic, quintessential World War Two tank. Amazing. Amazing, and that's it. Again, guys, thanks very, very much for for posting your, your pictures. It's just, it's just brilliant. Oh, and a big, massive thank you to Paul and his kind words about us in War Games Illustrated. Yes, <laughs> thank you very, very much. That was, thank you. Yeah, that was fantastic. That app, I said, I said to Paul that absolutely made my day. It was just such a nice thing to say. I know, Dom, you took exception at the unpolished part. <laughs> we're, com <laughs> we're completely unpolished. But, uh, uh, I was only, uh, I was, <laughs> I, I was having a bit of a joke because it's like. Yeah, we're not polished. No, we're not polished. <laughs>
Just uh, bit, no, we're, we're just we're stop just, it, we're, Miller. <laughs> Let it go. Cannon charge bonus. <laughs> Bloody hell! I'm going to have to hear about this all day tomorrow. <laughs> You know that, right? I'm gonna. <laughs> wow. I think we've definitely touched a raw nerve. Oh, Remember that? Just let it go. Oh my god! Oh, well, um... well oh, I'm... <laughs> it's not me. Um, I need to put the new menu up, don't I? Yes, you do. Know, December. December. So mm. we don't we, we don't have quite as many streams because we're we're off for two weeks over Christmas yeah. this year. Mm -hmm. um, so I will get the um, the the menu up, but next Monday the fifth. Um, I believe is going to be Dom because Dom, you're not here on the twelfth, are you? Mm -hmm. And then uh, the twelfth yep. is um, is the is the award. Is the awards is night? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is the award or is that next week? Uh, no, because it won't be finished. It finishes next Tuesday. So yeah, it's, it's open for it's open for another days. week. Basically, yeah. can can we still get can we still view the results if it closes? <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> uh, we need yeah, to that, check that. That, um, that might that might ruin the episode. So I might do. Yeah. Might it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We better check that. Um, and then um, our last show of 2022 will be on the 19th, uh, and then we'll be recommencing on the. We 9th. could do the awards that night. The nineteenth, we could do mm. so long as we I can. Yeah, that as long as we can access them. Well, I can download <laughs> them, can't I? <laughs> I'll download. I, them. I, I so might. E I might even dig out a waistcoat and the hobby cravat for there that. Then, then that's the last one before Christmas, and then that'd be a good way yep. to do it. it? And there will, and there will be, and yes, uh, don't don't worry, Brian. There will be the OPC. We will, we will have oh, that yes. as well. So we, that, we, yes, we will indeed. have that in. So. Awesome. Yeah, but we're, we're we're into one minute of overtime. You lucky, God. lucky people! You, oh, just, oh, no. apologies. We were um, we we're a man down for you know a third of the show, but um, internet oh, oh. problem. Oh, congratulations! We we're a man down. You could look yeah, at it either way. way. Yeah. Either way you want to take yeah. it. Um, but again, yeah, big massive thank you to everyone that's watching on the catch up. We always appreciate it. Um, anything else, chaps? Anything else coming up? Uh, no, I think um, I. Th I think that's it. We're we're gearing up for, for the end of year, and then we'll go away, and then we start season four in January. January, yes, yes indeed. All we're ready to go. Exciting. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I know that. Just a big a big apology to anyone that's left comments on my last video. Um, I'm having issues with notifications on my phone, so I'm a bit behind, but I will get those done this week. Apart from that, again, massive thank you to everyone that's uh, turned up tonight. Um, enjoyed your basing and gr gear grinding hobby and modelling things. <laughs> um, like Martin said, there will be a, a schedule put up on um, the Facebook group and the community page. Yep. And we will see you all next week. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Take care. Stay safe.